greetings, fellow detectives. Good morning. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to our live stream for Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. The 13th mystery in the Nancy Drew series. Welcome, good morning, happy Sunday. I hope you're all having a fantastic morning. I know there were many people excited for this game. I'm super excited for this one too. I think it's a very quality game, very well made. So this one will be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and start our new game. Welcome to my latest ca Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join forces with the Hardy boys. I just hope this doesn't turn out to be another one of Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people can be a little too rich and a little too famous for their own good. Wish me luck. Love, Nancy. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West? You are just awesome! And Tino Balducci. Only the most famous police detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives? My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective their friend? Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because see, one day in 1903, his train, this train, was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <laughs> She's gone. Oh my gosh. What in the world? What the? Hey, what's going on? People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. Greetings, Adam. And hello, Afrogamer dude. This is such a fun one, I agree. So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minor celebrities. What was your name again? Nancy Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You don't remember me, do you? No. <laughs> so rude. Such shade, Charlena. We remember everyone we've ever met, and they never remember Nancy. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? Psst. Nancy! Come here! Uh, excuse me for a second. 
Ooh, nice forever insane. <laughs> but that woke you up on your Sunday morning. Is this Jake and his wife? Yes. From what I've read, Camille loved to sing and dance, even in death, apparently. Jake reportedly told people that after she died, he would sometimes see strange glowing lights outside the windows at night, bobbing gracefully alongside the train as if dancing with it. He said he found the sight very comforting. I suspect normal people would have found it terrifying. Well, I guess I'm normal then, because I would have found it terrifying. Okay, everyone. Look who we got. Frank and Joe Hardy in our physical presence for the first time ever in the series. Who's your fave? I'm personally a Frank fan. I like the quiet, stoic, more intellectual side of the partnership, but obviously Joe's awesome. Who's your fave? Hey, Nance. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Welcome, Maria. Did you talk to him? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you ask him about it? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American Teens Against Crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. What'd Charlena have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? Absolutely, my history girl. They are so awesome. I kind of agree with Frank. You've got to be kidding. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Great. Catch you later. Meaning we'll sit at this table and not do much. <laughs> okay, I love this train so much. Sadie Crawford. And I love how easily it is to navigate from car to car. Like, the navigation in this game is just super it looks fun. Like there's something behind this painting, but I can't seem to move it. Because it, like, unfolds chapter by chapter. It's train car by train car. It's so good. Flippy Fins, freshly canned salmon. J.R. Ruffian Sons, Bellingham, Washington. Is this a hint to Danger and Deception Island, maybe? The which also took place in Washington. Um, let's see. So the engineer is up here. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Lori Gerard has disappeared. So? Did you know she was going to disappear? Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now, my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non-stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. But... Now, if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. Okay, Engineer does not seem all that concerned. Which Looks makes like it... some sort of steam valve. Sound like Lori told him to just keep going no matter what happens. Ooh, this is your favorite Nancy Drew game. Something nice about traveling on a fancy train like Agatha Christie. Exactly. The vibe of this one is perfectly Agatha Christie. All right, this is a second chance if we turn on the air and let it sit there. We're basically going to uh, blow up the that train. That doesn't look good. Oh, no. What's going to happen? Oh, I got a new subscriber. Thanks, my history girl, <laughs> for the subscription. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are we not going to blow up? Is this not a second chance? 
Oh, okay. Well, I'll just fix it then. I thought we'd explode. Darn. <laughs> a square and a duck. A square and a duck. It looks like this thing opens up. But how? Hmm. I'll have to figure that out later. Oh, this train is just so pretty. How cool would it be to have your own train? And how cool would it be if trains like this still existed? Like, this kind of thing just doesn't exist anymore. Yes? What are you working on? I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Boulet, who died about a year after they were married. The name Camille is so pretty. When did he buy this train? Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. So he went west and became a miner? All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated, and its location quite unknown. Right, Maria? She must be very petite. She's probably only like, she's probably under five feet tall. Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? No doubt because I'm such an authority on life in the Old West, and because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. My knack for research is, well, it's a gift. Oh. I'll let you get back to your writing. All right, then. Her knack for research is a gift. I love how full of themselves all of these characters are. Hello. Um. <laughs> Pretty. Looks like some kind of gemstone. We enter this train car by being met with a um, goat of some sort. Nice little puzzle here. We have to match this to the picture above. So I'm guessing if we do the corners first, right click to rotate, that would probably be our best bet. Hmm. Is it that one that goes there? No, it's probably this one. Yeah, that looks like it could be right. And then maybe this one goes here? Mm, that looks like it could be right as well. Obviously, this is in the middle. Hmm. Maybe? Okay, let's go with that. Oops. No, that one maybe goes over here. No, maybe goes down here. Yeah, that looks better. And then... That looks right. This one goes on top. Okay, we're close. There we are. Left pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? Good questions, Nancy. Good morning, Jessica. This must have been the sleeping car. Welcome to our train. So this is the sleeping car. I love the flashes of light on the side, like the details in this are so good. A tale of two dolls. Ill-tempered Edna could not get her way. She couldn't get Alice to come out and play. I can't, I'm too tired, is what Alice said. I just want to go straight back to bed. Me. <laughs> Edna angrily tried to make herself heard, but all that came out was one two-part word. Why, I'm not your mother, yawning Alice replied, till Edna the Terrible finally grew up, gave up, and cried. So basically all of the dolls have a two-part name. It's their, like, first name, and then, I like... I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <laughs> uh, guessing could take me a while. And then there's, like, a description word. 
Oh, yes, we can pull the emergency brake. You're right, Jessica. <laughs> I love it. You wake up in the morning and you are immediately ready for the chaos. Ooh, I'm the Alice doll, right? Same. Better not mess with that puppy. <laughs> oh, 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 ow. Oh, oh, geez. That's probably the most vicious head bonk that Nancy's ever had. Oh my gosh. The sound of her head hitting this metal? Oh jeez. Oh no. I'm sorry, Nancy. That was that was aggressive. I am chaos. I love it. Okay, so this is Jake's car, I believe. No, this is Camille's car. Where John Gray, the ghost hunter, has his little setup. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing, John Gray? It's a pleasure to meet you. I've seen your TV show. Then I don't have to explain what I'm doing. Oh, heck no. Why, you're measuring the whozy whatsism with your trusty gizmometrometer thing. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions in local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. Right, Grace? Getting crushed by an elevator is pretty bad as well. <laughs> Welcome to the train. Relatable, so true. You, it's John, the worst character. That's very interesting. It's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing, and I for one am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlena Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. Ooh. Shade. Spilling the tea, John. <laughs> what do you think of Tino Balducci? I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. Is Lori a friend of yours? First time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course. Like everyone else who reads the tabloids. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Maybe she doesn't have any friends. Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. I won't keep you any longer. Come back anytime. I think Balducci I love to hate. Like, he is so despicable, but I love it because he's so despicable. Like, it's just so funny. Um... And John is, he's a little more Sickly one note. Sarah caught a germ so new, it made one of her pretty green eyes turn blue. Sickly Sarah has two different colored eyes. Important to know. I still like John, but I know what you mean. Like, he doesn't have quite as much development as like some, some of the some others. Sort of game. Can I play it? Oh, probably have to wind it up first. That was a very meditative experience. I wonder what's in here. Ah, sheet music for Camp Town Races. All right, well, we'll take that. Sickly Sarah got the COVID. Oh, no! <laughs> is it really the last train if I've ridden it 15 plus times? That is a good question, Tanya Timberwolf. Teddy Eberhardt. So Teddy, Teddy likes his plaid. I'm a fan of Teddy. Oh, we'll have to figure out everyone's favorite book doll. Of samplers. So this is a book about samplers and the different um, symbolism that each sample has, which is pretty cool. 
I love that that used to be a thing. Like, that's just how women would spend their days. Ooh. Don't do that, please. Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. You just about took out my eardrums. Sozzles. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, all right? Okay. Nancy? <laughs> please don't. <laughs> I was going to see if that triggered a second chance. Apparently not. Okay, it's puzzle locked. box. That is locked that Nancy can't open at this moment. Looks like Camille was teaching herself how to play the piano. How long have the Krollmeisters been around? Forever. <laughs> Thomasina O'Neill. So Thomasina is missing a lock of her hair. Looks like some kind of sewing sampler. I With wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. With awful Ursula. And then Owl and Cherry. 10, 17. So 17. I wonder what's under here. And what the deal is with those weird looking bolts. I think it was Camille, Jessica, but yeah, the dolls are super freaky. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's me. Hi, Bess. And me. Hey, George, what's up? What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. This is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's the one who insisted we call you Nancy. Only because you're driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I couldn't care less what Laurie Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, Nan? Our hostess has disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, the train went into a tunnel, everything went dark, and when the train came out of the tunnel, no Lori. She just disappeared. Publicity stunt. My thoughts exactly. Remember the time she was allegedly kidnapped from her Vegas hotel room? Yeah, the guy across the hall just happened to have a camera and got it all on tape. It made the evening news in practically every city in the country. And then there was her daring escape the next morning. Only it turns out she faked the whole thing. Of course, she claims her ex-boyfriend faked it to get back at her. She thought she was really being kidnapped. Like anybody believes that. Sounds to me like somebody has been spending a lot of time reading the tabloids. George has. Very funny. So what else is going on? Before she disappeared, Lori told us that the purpose of this train trip is to find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died, and he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? Not yet, but the train is also rumored to be haunted by his dead wife. Hmm. So first Hurley's wife dies, then Hurley vanishes, then the engineer dies, then Lori vanishes. A pattern, maybe? Best. Do us all a favor and leave the detective work to Nancy, okay? Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Ew, creepy. She's a freak. Get rid of the dolls, Camille. <laughs> Jake used to see strange lights at night bobbing alongside the train and thought it was Camille dancing. Super creepy. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. Which is hard when you're practically covered in paint. Catch you later. We'll be right here. Yeah, washing the paint out of our hair. Wouldn't you be more likely to get goosebumps if you're covered in paint? Because the paint would make you cold? I would think. Adobe beige. Hi, Friday Lambda. It's not a very nice color for a bedroom wall. It's definitely not very, um, creative. Hey, Nancy, right? That's right, Nancy Drew. Amateur detective, huh? You never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? 
I don't know. Do you like what you do? I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Yes, I sure did. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days? FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. I heard all they had was a plastic knife from a carry-out chicken place. You heard wrong. You see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers, all have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? Because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. Do you think it had anything to do with Lori's disappearance? Nah. Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. Juan, I think that uh, Bess probably has a lot of, like, social skills. Like, she's very friendly and she's really good with people. Like, she's got a lot of really good people skills. And I think she also probably has a lot of good artistic skills like I think she probably has a really good eye for design she strikes me as somebody who like is really good with colors and maybe um arty type things like pottery or painting I feel like she'd be really good with all that yes I did look at the picture in Charlene's room in complete name may I see it sure in fact here keep it wear it around your neck or something that way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. THE Tino Balducci. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what else can I do for you? <laughs> Ooh, your walls are a pale orange and it's very pastel and nice. That does sound nice. Most of our walls are kind of like a grayish blue throughout our house. So, what do you think happened to Lori? She could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. So you're gathering facts? Of course. It may not look it because that's my style. I'm a low-key kind of guy. But hey, don't worry. I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now why would I want to do a thing like that? You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Have you talked to John Gray? <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I'd talk to him would be to arrest him for fraud. Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Not a problem. I love how much shade these characters throw throughout the course of this game. It's so good. Burn. Tino, you are a special kind of person. Yeah, he is. Why do I feel like this train is going to get struck by lightning and never make it to its destination? It does have a very cursed feel about it. Copper Gorge is at least two days away. What are these people eating? There must be a, um, like a dining car. But I guess we don't see it. Hmm, that's a good question. Yeah, I imagine Bess would like to really paint pictures. I think she'd enjoy kind of stuff like that. All the walls in my house are white. That's very nice. That's kind of the style right now, isn't it? To have kind of white, clean designs. It would strike the train several times because it's moving. Eliza Sandberger. Eliza Sandberger. For the price of 371 Curl Master Doll with decorative red ribbon. Okay, so Eliza Sandberger has a decorative red ribbon. That's a fun couch. Another gemstone. Another gemstone. There's this game J -H. here. J.H. For Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. Artsy with a sciencey side to her. Like in one of the games, she talks about cooking and carbs. Oh, yeah. I could totally see that, too. Yeah, like she would combine kind of artistic skills with sciencey type things. Like cooking is a great example of that. At least in earlier games. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. 
We know where the dining car is, but she can't use the stove in there. Yeah. So maybe they're having a bunch of sandwiches? Maybe that's why uh, Joe is so hungry for cheeseburgers. Because <laughs> they haven't had um, substantial food. Camille with Hagar Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. And then we have our book on gemstones and how to identify them. We got quartz. We got amethyst. My favorite is amethyst. Like this purple color. Stunning. What is your guys' favorite gemstone? The citrine's cool. Tiger eye. Tourmaline. Beryl. Aquamarine. Emerald is really pretty. Garnet. Peridot is my gem. My birthstone. Pyrope. Corundum. Ooh, rubies and sapphires. Oh, that sapphire is really pretty. Zircon. Oh, I just love Looks vibrant like an colors. Looks old-fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. With the symbol for silver on it, which is important. Ah, I love leaping lizards. Same. It's so fun. Cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers. Wonder what Jake used this for. For carbide. And then we have the pickaxe, obviously missing. Ash makes Bess into kind of the idiot of the group. Yeah, and then from that point on, she's kind of just, like, ditzy. Which isn't really fair. Like, just because she's blonde and, like, is one of the more feminine ones in the group doesn't mean she's a ditz. Hardly seems fair to poor Bess. I love Amethyst, too. Oh, you have a silver ring with Amethyst? That's beautiful, Maria. So cool. Sapphire is probably your fave. Oh, Sapphire is so cool, too. Nancy Drew ships. That is a fun question. Because it's fun to think about the characters from the different um, games interacting with each other at some point. What would be some good Nancy Drew ships? Hmm. This probably has to go this way. There, all done. Ooh, a soft spot for the Frank and Nancy ship. They do seem very well matched, but I'm just so loyal to Ned. <laughs> An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. Indeed. So, seven and ten. That square in that deck looked very familiar. So it sounds like we unlocked this door. Bess had strong points in the earlier games. Like, she was girly and a bit boy crazy, but she was intelligent. I don't think Nancy would be friends with her if she was just dumb. Totally true. It's nice to give them a little bit more, um, dimension. <laughs> Whoops. Oops. Notifications everywhere. Pardon me. When I was younger, I thought that Henry and Bess would make a cute couple. Ooh. Opposites attract kind of thing, Nadia. That would be cool. And Bess is actually in that game, so they actually have potential to meet. Still ship Henry and Bess. Someone introduced me to a Nancy Deirdre ship, and I don't hate it. Ooh. I feel like that would be another thing of, like, opposites attract. Like, they hate each other, but they obviously still keep silver. working with each other. What do all those colors have to do with silver? Probably the uh, cigar box, Nancy, with the symbol for silver on it. So now we know that. Secret Looks panel. Like to make this thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. Citrine, amethyst, zircon... Those are all gemstones, I think. Lisa and the whale guy in Deception Island, yes. That would be a great ship. Bess has brains and beauty, exactly. Bess became the comic relief idiot character. Mm-hmm. She did, kind of. Nancy and Deirdre had so much chemistry in mid. Yeah. Could be upset about something that befell a doll. Save the water. <clears throat> I accidentally knocked the one Camille calls Naughty Tina off the shelf and literally I'm afraid fractured its tiny skull. 
Despite my heartfelt apologies, Camille burst into tears at the sight of the crack, which now traverses Naughty Tina's face. Okay, great. So we have a doll with a giant crack across its face. That sounds nice. It's on my mind since mid. Big on Ned Nancy, but I've grown to like Frank Nancy way more. <gasps> I totally understand the Frank Nancy ship. I just love Ned though, guys. He's just so steady. Like, Nancy needs that. <laughs> feel like no one else would be as loyal to Nancy, given how um, that diagram I found, those six unpredictable she is. supposed to go in these six holders, but I have no idea which one goes where. Hi, Amanda. Welcome. Yeah, I always thought Joe and Bess would be kind of a cute couple, too. Okay, so we can get the gemstones there. wonder what's supposed to go here. We need a map. Comedic relief, but not make her an idiot. Yeah, exactly. That is possible. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? A very good question. Okay. Nine, seven. Nine, five, nine, five. Wow, okay, puzzle. Nine two five, nine two three, nine Nine two six eight four one nine two six eight four three five nine two six eight four three one oh my goodness nine two six eight four three seven one five thank goodness jeepers jeepers Lori oh my gosh I never thought you'd be the one to find me. No offense, uh, Nadine? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car, you step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. But how did you get to this car without anyone seeing you? That's what I'm confused about. So it was just all for show? Well, not entirely. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Yes, Joe and Bess can go get cheeseburgers together. Good morning, HP Hippogriff. Welcome to the train. Uh, I think you were going to explain why you kidnapped yourself. Oh, right. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me! See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. So you want me to try to figure out where the mine is? Uh-huh. As for the other people on board, 
If you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. Oh, Colin and Nancy. Uh, Colin Baxter from Phantom of Venice. Oh boy. On a cursed ship that is very cursed. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. <laughs> I like parties. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. What about Tino Balducci? I met Tino right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his? You just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. 90 miles an hour might be a bit of an exaggeration there, Lori. I'm thinking more like nine. <laughs> How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And? She hated them. <laughs> I'll come back later. As soon as you figure it out, let me know. <laughs> oh boy. Lori, you're a real treat. Best deserves better. Hashtag best deserves better. This is true. Justice for best. Lot, naturally. I wonder how you open it. At least she wasn't full of profound, but I'll sleep profoundly I useless how you're quotes. To get this open. Oh, Patrick, he's an interesting character, isn't he? Looks like a dance floor, maybe? So Nancy can do some dancing. Can she do the splits? Let's do some dancing, Nancy. Do the splits. Woo! Okay, so apparently Nancy can do the splits. Whoa, Nancy is flexible and she has some long legs. <laughs> uh, funny. Ninety inches a minute. <laughs> I bet I know what this is for. I bet I do. That's handy to have. I want a trunk like this so bad, like a big trunk for storing things, but it has to have like Hogwarts stuff on it because that would be even cooler. Cool, um, what are these called? Record players. <laughs> totally blanked for a second there. Which train is your guys' favorite? I mean, train car, because this is definitely mine. This is so cool. Such a fun place to hang out. Why does Laurie remind me of that red hair chick from Clueless? I haven't seen Clueless. I really need to, though. Bus deserves everything. Yes, no disrespecting the Harvey. Hardy. I almost called them Harveys. Darn it, Lori. You're messing me up. Best deserves better, and the Hardy boys deserve uh, to be respected. She'd do what I do and put rocks in the shoes to trigger the pressure plates. That's a good idea. I am a Ravenclaw, my history girl. Hardcore Ravenclaw. My Patronus is a Kingfisher, and my wand is Larch, nine and three quarters inches with a Phoenix Feather core. <laughs> oh yeah, George is super athletic. We love George. Well, it's the little lady detective. What do you need? I found Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, the car that John Gray is in. Oriental Express, yes. She disappeared because she wanted to see who'd find her first, which is why she left that clue behind. That slug? I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat. But I thought, hey, why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. 
But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? Just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. Oh, yes, Grace. Charlena definitely makes the kooky old lady cruise ship. How did you and Lori meet? We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot upstairs, but nice girl. She seems to have a thing for your eyes. Yeah, she always told me they were... I mean, she told me once that she thought they were very, uh, you know, brown. Good cover. What do you think happened to Jake Hurley? He probably died trying to work that mine of his all by himself. But I'll let you in on a secret. I'm onto something that could crack this case wide open. Right, Friday Lambda? Jake is a genius. <laughs> what did you find? Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. Liar. Thanks for your help. Not a problem. Liar. You're a lying liar face and I don't trust you. Okay. Silver. Gotta look in my handy dandy detective notebook for... Okay. Silver is orange. Blue. Green. Red. Purple. And yellow. Marvelous. And inside we have like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. Our dance steps. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. And basically this is a long letter telling us that the um lamp is your friend Thomas Wilson. May the lamp I sent light send you soon light your way to the gold you seek. I have sent you two lamps which you should receive by the end of the month. When you get them, simply place carbide in the lower chamber, water in the upper chamber, then use the built-in flint lighter to ignite the jet of gas which results. As you'll see, the carbide lamp is an exceedingly practical device, especially for people in your dark and dangerous line of work. Would that you or I had invented it. In your last letter, you sounded quite despondent, old chum. I suppose this is understandable in view of your failure to strike it rich. But I am living proof of how quickly misfortune can turn into good fortune. Little did I suspect five years ago that my attempt to produce aluminum would instead produce calcium carbide, or that calcium carbide, when placed in water, would release acetylene. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good for you. Still mad that Bess was kidnapped. It's like the writers only put her in as a plot device. Yeah, that reveals a whole lot of other problems with Ransom of the Seven Ships. <laughs> Ooh, for George, Dark Souls, Fortnite, Zelda. Nice. She'd prefer getting out and being physical. That's also true. All the solutions using the color wheel always have complementary colors. Yeah, I kind of noticed that actually, but I hadn't fully put that thought together. That makes sense, Friday Lambda. She can be both. Giving off strong gay vibes. She definitely could be. It's not canon, but we love um, we love our that presentation. That I saw in the caboose. I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts. I can see after like a workout or something, George just sits down and plays Rocket League and Fortnite. I could totally see that too. Dave Gregory would treat Bess, right? Dave is such a gentleman. Plus he's handsome, so there's that too. A good partner for George. In the Sims 4 Let's Play, More she's having a connect. real hard time finding a partner. <laughs> it's really, really upsetting, actually. <laughs> like, I feel so bad. But none of her relationships are Here working out. What's up? I found Lori safe and sound in the caboose, so I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong. 
Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even stranger is, I'm still getting them. So maybe they're not about Lori. Maybe they're about you. Or maybe you're making them up. Me? I'm not in any trouble. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. Could you be more specific? Unfortunately, no. Well, I'll catch you later. Come back anytime. Well, then you're definitely making it up. I feel like I've always gotten gay vibes from George. I kind of have too. Get George a GF 2020. Yes. Are you guys watching the new Nancy Drew series? Unfortunately, yes. I haven't yet, but I've been curious. I just don't have um, easy access to the CW. I don't have cable. Not touching it with a 10-foot pole. Yes? I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? We are better detectives. They're not Boy Scouts. <laughs> so much shade. Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> Doesn't everyone. Do you think she could do it? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? I'll touch bases with you later. That would be nice. Ugh. Hey, Nancy. What's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep, she's holed up in the caboose. And as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori. You got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. These are good ships. I'm impressed with these. Ooh, Lauren Holt. That would be a good girlfriend for George. Is that what that one was for? That suggestion? Keep wondering who... Yeah, who'd be a good partner. Yeah, I could see Lauren. That would be a good, good match. That's why I wouldn't touch the show. <laughs> Gotta keep watching. We need you in support group. No, we don't always want to be romance novelists. This is true. Hmm, Ryan from Deadly Device. That's an interesting pairing. Balducci wants me to share everything I find out about Jake Hurley with him. I'll bet he does. He just doesn't want you to show him up again. Yeah, he wants you to do all the legwork so at the last minute, BAM! He can swoop in and grab all the credit. I wouldn't tell him a thing, Nance. Unless it's to get lost. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. If the engineer had any surviving relatives, we may be in luck. The guy died more than 100 years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlena What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. Good idea, Frank. I'll ask her. Joe Hardy, master of pouting. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her! Show her what? That old picture we found! Uh, okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell's supplies and pawn shop. That's gotta be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. Right. See you soon. You know where to find us. Hi, Ray Marie. Welcome. Oh, I'm sorry you missed the first hour. 
We only found Lori so far, so there's still lots of great gameplay to be had, which is great. Ryan's chaotic, Lauren's more stable. That's true. Considered a story where Ned actually follows Nancy to Scotland in the Silent Spy. Instead of the usual, you know, I want to come along, but I didn't come along nonsense. Yeah, right? Like, he always says that, but, like, why don't they let him go along on a mystery? Like, let him go. He wa clearly wants to. Look, 30 years old. Frank is wearing a fishing vest. <laughs> I kind of like his vest. <laughs> but maybe that's just because I'm in Minnesota and that's, like, fashion around here. <laughs> they do look better than in Kapu Cave. Kapu Cave is an atrocious design for them. More questions? How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? If you're smart, you'd ask me. And because my work is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what I can turn up. That'd be great, thank you. Whoever invented the cellular modem, that's whom you should thank, dear. I'll let you get back to your writing. Let me know if you run across anything juicy. That is a disproportionate laptop. Look at the top versus the bottom. Like if she closed it, the top would only, <laughs> there'd be like two inches of s the bottom still visible. Ooh, Katie Firestone's an option. Yeah, they don't look like teenagers. This is true. This is very true. All right, we can do, did we do this one already? Oh yeah, we did this one already. One of the lifesaver jackets from the 80s. He stole it from his dad's closet. Yeah, he's just bringing vintage back. That's it. That's what he's doing. Oh. Um, whoa. whoa! Somebody must have thrown the emergency brake. The question is, did somebody throw the brake? Or something? Oh, Joe, now you sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene, and I saw no one. Who was the next person on the scene? John Gray. Then Balducci came bursting through one door while Frank and the engineer came through the other. Boy, was that guy ticked. He said the train could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. Everybody was there except Charlena. I don't think she left her laptop the whole time. There's no way Lori could have thrown the brake, unless she had someone else do it. The question is, why? What did she or anybody else stand to gain by stopping the train? Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at work here. Ah, Joe. I'm going to see if Balducci's done dusting for fingerprints. Catch you later. Hmm. More questions? Would you like to see the letter that Lori gave me as a reward for finding her? The one in which Jake Hurley supposedly tells his niece how to find his lost mine? No, thank you. I happily leave it to you to try to solve the mystery of his disappearance. You can afford to look foolish, dear. I can't. Ouch. Yeah, the vest. So 1980s, it's a thing for him. He does have one in mid, that's true. Yeah, it is kind of spooky, Friday Lambda. Like, what is the point of stopping the train? Joe might have a point here. Nancy's supposed to give us 50s vibes. Frank is supposed to give us 80s vibes. Maybe they each get to pick a decade. <laughs> George would be confident in confessing to her crush. That might be the one area where George doesn't feel confident. Because she seems to feel very confident in everything else. They shake like small chihuahua standing. <laughs> Do you have a theory as to who pulled the emergency brake? Well, I know it wasn't me. I assume it wasn't you, and I highly doubt it was Lori. So that leaves those two friends of yours, Mr. Gray and Mr. Balducci. What do you think their motive was? I don't know about your friends, but perhaps those other two simply thought it would be fun. Boys will be boys. Were you able to find the name of Jake's train engineer? I came across three references to the fact that Jake had an engineer, but I'm afraid none of them included his name. I failed. Sorry. Aren't you even going to try finding out what happened to Jake Hurley? No time. The only reason I haven't insisted that Lori release me from all the silliness is there's always the possibility that what happened to him has the makings of a bestseller. Although I highly doubt it. 
<laughs> incomplete name. I don't mind this sweater, but I do mind the pink flower that doesn't match at all and the pearl necklace. Like, not, not necessary. <laughs> Why are you so sure that Jake's story wouldn't make a bestseller? His story is an all-too-common one. A man wanders off into the desert in search of gold and never returns. Why? He either doesn't have enough food or water, or he encounters hostile natives. But why was his train found out in the middle of nowhere with just the dead engineer on board? That does make the story a little more interesting. My guess is the engineer got tired of waiting for Jake to return, took off in the train to get help, and died of a heart attack along the way. After which, the train rolled to a stop in Blue Moon Canyon. Anyone experienced enough to single-handedly run a steam engine would have been quite a bit older than Jake. What do you think happened to Camille? She probably died of something mundane, like pneumonia or even measles. Now, if it was wintertime when she died, and they were in the mountains, Jake no doubt kept her body on the train for months before he buried her, which is rather delicious in a morbid sort of way. Hello, Golden Moon! Welcome! Oh, does Charlena look terrifying? That's amazing. Well, I'll let you go. All right, then. Like, Uncanny Valley horrifying. Love it. Looks like Tino's through dusting for fingerprints. Except this is exactly what the break looks like even before he dusts for fingerprints, so I'm not quite sure how Nancy knows that. Yes, welcome aboard the train! That's why they're besties in the first place. Yeah, I think Bess would be a lot more confident in, like, dating and social stuff. And George would feel a lot more confident in, um, just, like, things that she does. Like, her technology and her athletics and everything. What's up? So are you making any progress in here? Oh, yeah. Not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs, that's electromagnetic readings, but take a look at this. You've got something? I set up a camera and took some time-lapse photos. Sometimes I was in the room, sometimes I wasn't, but somewhere along the line, I managed to get a shot of Camille. Where? You don't mean that little blob, do you? Yep, that's Camille. Okay... You're skeptical. That's cool. Just remember, the key word when it comes to ghostly phenomena is energy. That blob is the result of Camille's residual life force, spirit if you will reacting with the chemicals in the photographic paper. Couldn't it just be a flaw in the photographic paper? Okay, it could be that too, but it's not. Trust me. I won't keep you any longer. Take care. Hi, Kayla Flynn. I'm so glad you randomly found the channel. Oh, Ghost of Thornton Hall is such a good one. Love it. Hello, Francine7. Welcome to the train. Finally catching one of these when they're live. Yay, that's wonderful. I honestly have a crush on Joe and Mid. I will admit that their designs in mid are pretty good. One of the only good things in mid. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. What are those doing in here, Tino? Glad you dropped in. Lori told me she'd given you a letter from Jake Hurley that says how to find his mine. I didn't mention it before because it's very bizarre. Lori should have given that to me. I mean, I'm the trained professional around here. Let me take a look. Did you find Lori? No, I'm pretty sure we did. I've seen enough. Two words, use less. Those are just the rantings of a guy who spent way too much of his life swirling mud around in pans under the hot sun. Five star nut job. <sighs> Lori says she found this letter in a wastebasket. Exactly where it belongs. Tino Balducci. <laughs> Did you find any fingerprints on the emergency brake handle? None that were any help, thanks to Casey Jones up there. I told the old geezer not to touch anything, but he went and got his big, fat, oily paw prints all over the place. If we didn't need him to drive the train, I'd charge him with obstruction of justice. So you have no idea who threw the brake? Whoa, I didn't say that. As a matter of fact, I found this probably fell out of the perp's pocket while he was yanking on the handle. Looks like some kind of thermometer. Yeah, like the kind a certain ghost hunter uses on that bogus show of his. You think John Gray threw the break? But why would he do that? Because they're thinking about axing his show, that's why. I checked with his buddy of mine in L.A. Gray's got to come up with something real big real soon, or he's toast. 
and you can't get much bigger than a train with a spooky past that's prone to strange accidents, now can you? Have you confronted John with your suspicions? All in due time. I always like to get my ducks in a row before I make an arrest. But couldn't someone else have dropped that thermometer? Please. Who's the top cop here, huh? Who's the world-famous detective? You? I know what I'm doing, sweetheart. John Gray wanted publicity. That's exactly what I'm gonna give him. But... It's been great talking to you. Not a problem. But I am a world-famous detective. <laughs> Probably more than you are. <laughs> He's so full of himself. Still a Frank girl, but Joe is fantastic. Yeah, that's kind of my thinking, too. I love... Per I'm personally a Frank fan, but Joe is still fantastic. They are a great duo. At least Midnight and Salem improved on their design. They saw Capu Cave and said, we can do better than that. Yeah. Yeah, anything would hopefully be better than Creature of Capu Cave's design. Watching Se Secrets Can Kill, I started to run a marathon with the entire Nancy Drew walkthroughs. Of course, using only her walkthroughs. That's so nice, Danny Nam. I'm so glad the walkthroughs were helpful for you. That's awesome. Okay, so now we have the steps here. We actually technically haven't read the letter yet. The 3rd of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, you are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I, too, depart this earth, and its location is lost forever. I cannot tell you outright where it is, lest this epistle fall into the wrong hands. But with the information which follows, and with my train, which shall be yours upon my death, I promise that you'll be able to find it. First, you will need a map. To obtain it, know that my travels have taken me all over this great country, to towns which can be difficult to find, to Calico, Silverado, and Central City, to Dodge City, Virginia City, and Tombstone. To locate the mine on the map, you'll need my projector. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly. But to retrieve his name, you'll have to give the dolls an order. This will require looking inside Camille's dancing shoes for the name of their maker, and wearing the shoes as you perform her favorite step on the dance floor. As for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you. Words which, when translated into numbers and used in combination, will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorge, Colorado and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. I promised Camille that this train would always be her home. In return, she promised to never leave and indeed she never has. People say I'm crazy, but I've seen her and heard her and feel her presence on the train even today, 20 years after her untimely death. So above all else, my dear niece, let nothing happen to my train. It holds wonderful things. Kindest regards, Jake Hurley. All right, so we basically have a treasure map now, which is fantastic. Love that. I just love how balanced the whole, like, Nancy's group is. Like, we have Bess and George, Frank and Joe, Ned, Nancy, they all have um, like very different strengths, but they all work so well together as a team. I just love that. We're all more useful than Tino Balducci. This is true. Tino Balducci. It's my favorite line in White Wolf of Icicle Creek when Nancy hears that Chantal got Tino Balducci to help. Tino Balducci. <laughs> Him again? I ship Tito with on Gertrude. Central City. Central City. Central City. Dodge City. Dodge City. Virginia, oh, 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 ver, virgin, ver, Virginia city, there we go. 
Tombstone. Tombstone. All right. And we've got our eight letters, which we can put into that machine outside. Just glad Lori didn't start calling the Hardys the Hurleys. Strange. Just the Harveys. a jumble of letters. <laughs> Tina was a tiny bit less annoying than the boss lady. Then Chantal. Ooh, interesting take. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. I shipped Tino and actually being a decent human being. <laughs> Love it. I wonder what happened to Lori in the later games. That is a good question. I always kind of wonder like what happens to these characters when we're when we're done with them. <laughs> All right, so got our dance pattern. Darn, the name of the shoes is so faded, I can't tell what it is. Oh. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them. Yeah, we need a picture of them too. Okay, camera. Okay, can I send it to Bess now? Picture has been sent. Okay, now let's go talk to Bess. I'm gonna leave you, Lori, because I don't want you listening in on my phone conversation. That must be the projector Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. Got a job at a fast food place and is still crying to this day. Became a writer since, well, you know. That's awesome. Um, directory. Best. Hello? Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? Lori gave me a letter that Jake Hurley wrote to his niece, telling her how to find his gold mine. If Lori knows where the mine is, why doesn't she just make a beeline for it? Because apparently Jake was too paranoid to tell his niece outright where it was. So he filled the letter with all these weird, obscure clues. I don't think Lori could make heads or tails of them. I know I barely can. Sounds like when he lost his wife, Jake may have lost a few marbles as well. The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Hey, I know what you can do. Take a picture of them with your cell phone, then send it to us, and we'll check them out for you. But I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the walls. Anyway, send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone as soon as you can. Actually, I already sent you a picture of the shoes. Well then, hey, we're on it. Ah, oh, you guys are the greatest. I know. Need anything else? Tino Balducci definitely has a thing for Lori Gerard. Really? Ooh, I bet the tabloids would love to hear that. What's more, I get the feeling Lori feels the same way about him. You mean there's some kind of mutual attraction thing going on between them? Something's going on between them. I'm not really sure what. We'll find out. I mean, that's a mystery worth pursuing. To heck with this Jake Hurley stuff. You'd give up the possibility of finding gold for gossip, Bess? For gossip this good? Oh, yeah. Catch you later. We'll be right here. That's true. I forgot about that. Lori does go to the wedding in Haunting of Castle Malloy, or she's at least invited. N. Oops. N. V. Never. Never. Zitba. Never Zitba. Never. Zit. <laughs> Bah. Ah, no, I'm so late on my favorite game. Hi, Demon Slayer. Welcome to the game. We just recently got Jake's letter and are kind of working our way through his clues. That's so interesting, Golden Moon, because, I mean, Lonnie is definitely an older uh, voice actress than what Nancy's actual age is. That's crazy that it sounds so different. That's so cool, though. We're not even halfway, so you're good. Exactly. Jake's mind must be somewhere on this map, but where? Okay, we got the map. I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map! Yes? I hear that Tino and you used to be an item. How did you know that? 
I'm a good detective, remember? We went out a couple of times, yeah. As for why we stopped going out, you'd have to ask him. Do you have any idea who threw the emergency break? I know exactly who did it. You do? Well, who else could it be? Camille. None of us has any reason to stop the train, but Camille? She doesn't want us to find Jake's mine, so she's going to do whatever she can to keep its location a secret. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the train. She is dead, you know. Well, duh. That's why I know it's her. What's more, your friend that Jim Harley guy? Not Jim. Joe. Joe Hardy. Yeah, well, he thinks it's Camille, too. He just doesn't have the guts to say so. Guess I better get to work. You go, girl. You go, girl. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Lori. I appreciate that. All right, do we think Bess and George have the name of the, um, whatchamahoosit yet? The shoes? A message from your email provider. You don't get email. <laughs> Basically. Me again. Just checking to see whether you were able to find out the name of those dancing shoes yet. Your wish is our command, but hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chateauillant. C-H-A-U-S-S-E-T-T-E-S. C-H-A-T-O-Y-A-N-T-E-S. That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently, if you were into dancing in the 1870s, that was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateauillant. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us help. Talk to you soon. Okay. Well, George, back to work. <laughs> Best trying to procrastinate the room. I've never gotten to paint a room before, but I've always wanted to. I like Lonnie as the voice of Nancy, but she never sounded like she was 18. Exactly. Like, I'm so used to the voice, and I love it, and it's iconic as Nancy, but she does not sound very young. At all. Totally agree with that. <laughs> Laura Gerard, genius deductions, girlfriend. <laughs> Nancy is way better detective than Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, yep. I love the Sherlock Holmes stories. I've read every single one. Um, I binged read them in college <laughs> when I was just, I got the Barnes and Noble copy of the complete collection and I just read through it and it was fantastic. There's a spin-off series um, of Sherlock Holmes that I absolutely love. Upper left. Right, left one. I'm trying to interpret my notes to myself. Five left, down left. What? The fourth step? Five, left, down, left. Okay, got it. Oh, darn it. <laughs> the first book in the series is called The Beekeeper's Apprentice, and it's basically about um, Sherlock meeting a younger female version of himself, like who is just as skilled at mystery solving as he is, and it's so good. So good. I love it so much. Left, down, two, right, one... Right down one, right, right one, left, right one. Uh. Uh. Okay. Guess Camille liked to collect dolls. Yeesh. Nancy is timeless and so is her voice, exactly. If you could be in any Nancy Drew game, which one would you be in and why? Oh, that's such a tough question because there's so many locations that I love so much. It would be really hard for me to not want to be in Curse of Blackmore Manor to get to like see those secret passageways and everything. That one is pretty amazing. So I, my, my gut's telling me to go with Curse of Blackmore Manor. That's a really good question though. I thought Nancy was mid-twenties. Yeah, she does sound older for sure. Lori is in the same room watching us dance. This is true. And she doesn't even comment when we're, like, opening up these cupboards or anything. Houdini and Doyle. It's Harry Houdini and Arthur Conan Doyle solving supernatural mysteries. That sounds amazing. 
Oh, yes. I love Hercule Poirot. I love all the Agatha Christie stories, both Miss Marple and Hercule Poirot. So good. Creepy dolls. Sherlock Holmes is great. It's been years since I binged the stories. What's the name of the series? I, I don't think the series has a specific name, but the name of the book, the first book in the series is The Beekeeper's Apprentice. And then the second one is like A Monstrous Regiment of Women. Um, the author is Laurie R. King. It's so amazing. Yes, Hercule Poirot is amazing. Nancy doesn't seem to dress her age either. Lots of mom jeans. With a t-shirt with a horse on it. Still timeless. Yep. Except mom jeans are in style now. So Nancy's actually kind of um, popping with her style. Okay, so chaussette, chaussette, chatoyance. Shows it. <laughs> okay, with CH is Chantilly Hildegard, and she has the pleated dress. And it looks like she's actually there already. AU is Awful Ursula. And she has the red hair. Red hair and a hand me down robe. You must be a Weasley. Um, SS. Sickly Sarah. She's the one with the two different colored eyes. You have to do two different colored eyes. And then E.T., Edna the Terrible, the one that says Mama when you pick her up, which is terrifying. That's Yawning Alice. Mama! Okay, yeah, you're, you're terrifying. You go over there. Um, T.E., Teddy Erberhart, the red plaid box. So, with the red plaid quilt, one would imagine. And then uh, SC. 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 Sadie Crawford, the one with no shoes. You're missing your shoes, Sadie. You go there. And then. Right, sickly Sarah. <laughs> it's me, I guess. I hope you're not sick, Sarah. H A is. <laughs> Where's H A? Hagar Anderson, he with the suspenders, and then T.O., Thomasina O'Neill, she's the one missing a big old chunk of her hair, which is also terrifying, um, Yawning Alice, me, okay, based on all these descriptions so far, which doll are you? I am Yawning Alice because I am tired all the time. <laughs> N.T., Naughty Tina. She's the one with the cracked face. And then the last one is E.S. Eliza Sandberger with her little red ribbon. They are very scary dolls. <laughs> Aren't they, though? Fun little collage. Those dolls, I hate them, please. <laughs> They're done. We're all done. I'm back, and I'm not moving myself until this is done. <laughs> Welcome back, Demon Slayer. I hope you have a lovely breakfast. This is um, Abby's jewelry box from Message in a Haunted Mansion. They will be in my nightmare. <laughs> I'm yawning, Alice. Yup, same. Same. Yes? We'll talk some more later. Keep me posted. Okay. So... We've got the map. We did that. To locate the map, you'll need my projector. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly. We did Camille's dancing shoes. We did the steps. She has four words for us. Words which, when translated into numbers, that's later. Okay, so we need to get the oven open. Before we do that, I think I'm going to need to take a quick restroom break. So I will leave you guys here in um, the beautiful golden car for just a couple minutes. I'll be right back. Gonna fill up my water bottle too. See you in just a moment.
right, we're back. Get the headphones on. This sound is so soothing. Is there no sound at all? Oh my gosh, there isn't. <laughs> the soothing sounds on the train. I'd take ghosts over dolls. Ooh. I think I'd take dolls over ghosts. Crossover series with Hercule Poirot and Sherlock Holmes. Ooh, that would be cool. Okay. Back at it. So we need to get that oven thing open for the stove. What is it? Oven? We have all the little pieces, and don't we need to get it to add up to four, I think? No, maybe I'm wrong. Let's head all the way back. Were you pulling the emergency brake? No! Tanya Timberwolf, I would never. <laughs> oh, what is that? Ghost. We just saw a ghost. Oh, the sound was on. You could hear the train on the tracks. Good. Be kind of boring if you couldn't listen to anything. Ooh, this track is fun. Okay, so a duck and a square. And that will get us the name of the engineer. Hey, boys. What's, what's up? Nancy, you missed it. Missed what? The argument of the century. Joe, he's exaggerating. Aw, oh, come on. You heard him. They were ready to tear each other to shreds. Who? Charlena and Lori. All we heard was the tail end of it. And unfortunately, we really couldn't make out what they were saying. So, you don't know what they were arguing about? No. But whatever it was, both of them were absolutely out of their minds, livid. And it would probably be a good idea to find out why. Let me look into it. I'll talk to you later, okay? You know where to find us. Not yet, HP Hippogriff. We still have to, um, look at a couple things and then accuse, j'accuse them. More questions? What were you and Lori arguing about earlier today? Lori and I? We weren't arguing. We were simply discussing a topic about which both of us are passionate, that's all. Were you discussing her wanting to be a romance novelist? No. And even if we were, that's really none of your business. I know that sounds harsh, but really, Nancy, eavesdropping is so tacky. Actually, it was Frank and Joe Hardy who overheard you. They said I should talk to you before they gave me all the gory details, but since you obviously don't want to tell me your side of the story, I'll just have to get the scoop from them. No, no, you don't have to do that. A storyline that Lori submitted to me found its way into my last book, despite the fact that she never received compensation for it. She's reading the book now, and when she got to that part, she freaked. Yes, Demon Slayer. All the Sims wallpapers. Love it. <laughs> Lori blowing bubbles. I saw bubbles too. George and Deirdre is alike shipped. You stole one of her ideas? She had no business sending me unsolicited material. But technically, yes. Now legally she can't prove anything, and I'm certainly not about to admit anything. And it's not as if she needs the money. But that's what we were arguing about. For what it's worth, I'm going to talk to this producer I know to see if he'll cast Lori in his next movie. It'll help ease my conscience, and who knows? She could wind up being a star. I mean, she is blonde. I'll let you get back to your writing. Remember, if it's juicy, I want to know about it. But you don't want to share it. No, I totally agree, Jessica. I don't think that's bad at all. Like, I would rather it end and then we can mourn its ending rather than it just being horrible. <laughs> Building in The Sims 4 right now, so it's double. That's amazing. I love building in The Sims while listening to streams. It's so fun. Okay. So we need to look at these packing peanuts. I think. Hey, glad you stopped in. You gotta listen to this. What have you got? 
I put this digital recorder in the corner where Camille showed up in that picture and turned it on so it would just keep recording. Now when you play it back at normal volume, all you hear is background noise. But when you turn the volume way up and run the signal through a filter or two, Hear that? I hear something. It kind of sounds like a woman singing. Not just any woman. Camille. Camille. So be careful what you say in here. She's listening. Are you by any chance missing a small digital thermometer? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. When I went through the box I'd packed them in, that one over there, I came up one short. I was hoping to set up at least six in here so I could check for cold spots. How did you know I was missing one? Because Tino Balducci found it by the emergency brake handle when he was dusting it for fingerprints. And now he thinks you're the one who pulled it. That's ridiculous. I didn't have any reason to pull the emergency brake. Is it true that your show is in danger of being cancelled? Newsflash. My show was cancelled. Happened last night. But what nobody knows yet is that it's been picked up by a major TV network. Not only am I still on the air, but I'm sitting prettier than ever. Any other questions? Better to die a hero than become a villain, exactly. Were you in this room the whole time prior to that emergency break thing? Of course not. I made a couple of trips to my compartment in the sleeping car to get more equipment. But did I get an overpowering urge to pull the emergency brake while I was there? No. I saw a bunch of weird glowing lights outside the window of the sleeping car. Really? Actually, I'm not surprised. Yeah, Sarah, I'll be doing a season three this summer. Charlena said Jake Hurley used to see them too, only he attributed them to his dead wife, Camille. They're probably some form of piezoelectricity. See, my guess is quartz crystals in the ground are being compressed as the train passes over them, and the resulting voltage, called piezoelectricity, is manifesting itself as glowing lights probably because of some quirk in the train shape or in the composition of the metals used in its construction. It was custom-built, remember. So it's a natural phenomenon, not a ghostly one? Take it from me. Old Mother Nature was capable of some pretty scary stuff. Well, I'll catch you later. Take care. <laughs> awesome. I have to listen very, very carefully to hear the singing, Ray Murray. The volume probably wasn't loud enough for you guys. But it's like very faint, super duper faint. Those weren't glowing lights, Nancy. Those were bubbles. Exactly. Lori's blowing bubbles. <laughs> I want to make sure I look at the packing peanuts because that's how we trigger this conversation with Tino. Caitlin's already started it. Yes. That looks just like the stuff John Gray has his thermometers packed in. Does an official with a production company? Oh, hit me up, production companies. That sounds amazing. What's going on? How come you told me you and Lori never went out, and she told me you did? Don't you ever stop asking questions? When people start answering them honestly, I do. <sighs> My dumpster, okay? I'm not proud of what I did. I'm not happy about what I did. But it's done. It's over. Now let's drop it. Guess I'll just have to go talk to Lori again. You are incredibly irritating, you know that? I dumped her because... Because people said going out with her would make me look bad. Said she was a joke. That no one took her seriously. Said if I started hanging with her, no one would take me seriously. So I stopped calling. Did you ever tell Lori any of this? No. Now take a powder. I don't feel like talking anymore. But now I need to accuse you of lying some more. Still don't feel like talking. Well, I, but I need to accuse you. J'accuse! Okay, well, let's do this. Oh, I forgot to check what it's supposed to be. Well, if I fiddle around with it enough, we'll figure it out. A square and a duck. Do I have it written down? Probably not. And we also need to do the eagle. Hmm. Square and a duck and an eagle. I think one of them is 10, if I remember correctly. But you have to do it with like three pieces. 
So, uh, eight. Yeah, four for the square and then the duck. Four pieces to get the duck. Hmm, I might have to go look up what it's supposed to be. Let's go to Camille's train car. Never have I seen a show's writer with such a disconnect between what they think the viewers want versus what we really want for both shows. Yeah, like ignoring the original content that made it great. Yeah, those are all such great points. Absolutely. Ruth Kensington, and then that's Jake Hurley. Okay, so the duck needs to be one, and the eagle needs to be two. Oh, we already got the square, so one and two. Got it. Got it, got it. You know, nobody would take you seriously regardless of who you dated. <laughs> this is true. Okay. One, two, three... Um, does it have to be, wait, it's the wrong number. That's why, four and then minus, I need to get it to one. So, maybe nine? Hmm. If we do two, one. No. Still haven't met anyone who turned to Riverdale because they wanted to see evil dads in teacher affairs and Gargoyle King. Oh my, that sounds like a quite a show. <laughs> I recently realized that there's a new season of Bold Types. That's what I've been watching lately. <laughs> uh, ha -ha. One. Four. And then how do I get it to... One. Hmm... She'd be one of the girls who posts a picture of an Xbox controller and says, I love PlayStation. <laughs> I love that. The Archie comics, and I feel like they destroy the core of the characters. Same with Nancy Drew. Ugh, that's always so disappointing when some company takes a perfectly good story and, like, ruins it. Four... One. There With we go. Luck, I just opened the stove in the dining car. And we're still a slug short to get the eagle, so we don't quite have that yet. Can I talk to... Will he let me accuse him now? Still don't feel like talking. Well, that's too darn bad, Tino, because I have things I need to accuse you about. I thought the season ended at episode 10, but apparently it's returning in the summer. Yeah, I just, I kind of ran out of time this last summer because I wanted to make sure I finished all of my walkthroughs of the Nancy Drew games before, or are you talking about the CW series? Or are you talking about Bold Type? <laughs> We've been talking about a few different seasons, so I suppose I should wait before I answer that, Mari. Seven minus one minus two gets you four. Yeah, yep. Thank you, Fred Lambda. To the stove. James Thurston. Okay, so that's the name of his engineer. Yeah, I can tell the Hardy Boys. Hey, how's it going? Tino found one of John Gray's thermometers by the emergency brake handle and is getting ready to throw the book at him. John Gray threw the emergency brake? Why would he do that? Oh, the bold type, Mari. Oh, good. There's going to be more in the summer. That's awesome. Yes, I love the bold type, too. Isn't it so good? It's so addictive. 
Tino thinks it's because John's TV show is in danger of being canceled. But when I asked John, he told me his show was just picked up by a broadcast network. I still say there's less to all this than meets the eye, if you get my drift. I get your drift, Joe. I have lived with your drift for years. I am saddled with your drift. All right, all right. <laughs> I think I know the name of Jake Hurley's engineer. James Thurston. Great! What else do you know about him? Well, nothing. Good. Good? Yeah, finding out more about him will give us something to do. We'll look into it. See you later. If you need anything, just let us know. Yeah, Danny. Animal Crossing has, like, seriously blown up. More questions? I'll let you get back to your writing. All right, then. I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm super tempted. Forgot how much I love this game. Can't wait to replay it. It is such a good one. It is just so classic. It's flawlessly executed in terms of how it lays out. It's beautiful. They told Nancy they're helping, but secretly they're doing their homework, right? No kidding. What's up? Thanks for the chat. Come back anytime. Yes, Best Plays Animal Crossing has all the golden tools, a fuel, full museum, upgraded shops, and amiibo only villagers. <laughs> yes. Jerjer would be a sassy gamer. Best line from Frank, still my favorite comeback. I am saddled with your drift. Great internet connection on this train, right? Ah, I can't stay mad at a fellow detective. What do you need? Well, I'm about to make you mad again. You're the one who pulled that emergency brake, aren't you? <laughs> Me? <laughs> what are you, joking? Care to explain how packing material from the box those thermometers were in wound up on the floor over there? You're just some teenage nobody. I don't have to listen to this. You're right, you don't. Neither do the other passengers. But unless you give me a good reason not to, I think I'll tell them anyway. Look, maybe I was a little hasty, pointing a finger at the ghost guy like that. Maybe all those lies people have been spreading are starting to get to me. Maybe I thought it would help if I got a little positive press by solving a crime aboard a haunted train. Maybe I apologize. And, uh, maybe you can see fit not to let any of this go beyond this room? Well, no harm done, I guess. Great. Well... What else can I do for you? Maybe you're a jerk, Tino. It's been great talking to you. Don't mention it. Nancy forgives him far too easily. Gonna take some carbide, since we'll need it later. And... Gonna go down to talk to Lori. We need to find all the rest of the gems. How many do I have? One, two, three. I only have three. How many more do we need? Total we need one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I know where one of them is. I've been watching a lot of people streaming Animal Crossing, Danny, but apparently the entire purpose of it is to just kind of develop your island. So it's, you, you start on this kind of deserted island and then you build it up from the ground up and you can invite certain um, cute little villagers, like very characterized cute little animal villagers to live on your island. You can make it look really cool. Before you say anything, I just want to say thank you. For what? Tino came to see me. He said you'd made him realize what a jerk he'd been for dumping me, and then he asked me out. Isn't that great? He said he doesn't care what anybody else thinks. He thinks we make the perfect couple. Well, I can't argue with him there. So what do you want? Guess I'd better get to work. I'll be waiting. No, I haven't gotten that gem yet. And that's the only one off the top of my head that I can remember. The one in the chandelier that we haven't gotten already. Like, where are the other two hiding? Teenage nobody. Nancy's successfully solved 12 mysteries before this one, and we'll have 33 by 2020. What have you done, Tino? Egg Zacatoli. Oh, the other two gems not unlockable until Copper Gorge. Gotcha. Okay. So, I'm guessing that if we grab the one with Frank and George, we might... Frank and George. Frank and Joe. We might trigger the next one. Ned plays Overwatch in Fortnite with his college friends. 
but he also has a soft spot for Animal Crossing and Kirby. Absolutely. Hey, how's it going? Were you able to find anything out about Jake's engineer? That James Thurston guy? Good news and bad news. The good news is he had a wife in Copper Gorge, so he may have had children. The bad news is our internet service provider stopped providing before we could use our cell phones to find out anything else. That's okay. We can do more checking when we get to Copper Gorge. Right. We're on our way to Copper Gorge. Past farms. Yep, that would be Iowa. Nebraska would be corn. Yep. And then in, I think, yep, that's Colorado, we get... I was gonna say reindeer, but they're not reindeer. Elk. Elk? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Copper Gorge Museum hey and Taffy there. Shop. Welcome to Buell's Old Time Taffy House. Come on over here. Welcome, stranger. Listen, you by any chance get here on that private train what's parked out yonder? As a matter of fact, yes, I did. There's a rumor going around that Charlena Purcell's on board. Is that true? As a matter of fact, yes, it is. Hot dang if that don't beat all. I've read every single book that gal's ever written. Best writer what ever lived. Did she get off the train too? I don't think so. She's pretty busy. Charlena Purcell herself right here in Copper Gorge, breathing the same air as me. Hot dang! Well, welcome, little missy. Go on in and take a gander at what life was like during the heyday of Copper Gorge whilst you sample some of our delicious homemade saltwater taffy. So, this is some kind of museum? Why, it's the best kind of museum, sister. It's free. You can gape and gawk and ooh and ah to your heart's content. At least you can till I close up. Where'd all this stuff come from? Been in the family for years. For centuries, in fact. See, Buell was my great-great-uncle. This building used to be his general store. During the glory days back in the 1880s, he commenced a pawn brokering. So the miners Copper Gorge was crawling with back then could raise some cash to pay for grub and tools and such. But pretty soon, the mining boom went bust. And there was Uncle Butte, stuck with a whole store full of junk. Only it wasn't junk to him. Debris from lost lives and broken dreams, what he called it. Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. So, he passed it on to his kin. My great granddaddy's the one who come up with the idea of turning the place into a tourist attraction. And you make money by selling taffy? Tourists just love taffy. Especially when you dangle a free sample in front of them to get them hooked. Of course, it ain't really free. Some daffy on a stick will cost you two tokens. Which you can get by winning both those games over there. How much does it cost to play them? Well, ain't you the little penny pincher. Fact of the matter is, they're free. Unless you go messing with the artifacts I got in here. Do that and you'll be head first in the nearest snowdrift before you know what hit you. Do you by any chance have any of Jake Hurley's things in here? Jake who? Hurley. He was a miner. I think he may have left a lamp and a pickaxe with your great-great-uncle. Never heard of him. Of course, that don't mean his stuff's not here. Just means you're just gonna have to look around and see for yourself. But remember, Susie Q, don't touch. It was fun talking to you. Ditto, little missy. <laughs> Good old Fatima. Yeah, I think Fatima is supposed to be a woman. Okay, we have these magazines from the... Uh, ba -ba -ba. The, the Beach Hill. Beach Hill Museum. Good old taffy machine. So we gotta win the tokens to get some taffy. This is all super cool. Gold Rush. This horse guessing game, which is completely random. Taffy for all. Cool little machine. And this what have we here? This looks just like the insignia I saw on the train. I'll bet this was Jake's trunk. Indeed it was. You ain't touching anything over there, are you, missy? Oops, I'd better go ask permission before I mess with this. Can I have permission? You still here? Do you know what's in that old trunk over there? Why? You ain't been fooling with it, have you? Oh no, of course not. No, I just thought it might contain the lamp and pickaxe that I asked you about before. Well, if it does, you can forget about them, cause it's locked. None of my kin have ever been able to figure out how to open it. Not even my cousin Alvin. And he went to junior college. Would it be okay if I tried to open it? 
Well, now, I certainly ain't gonna let you break it open if that's what you're getting at. Oh, no, I would never use force, believe me. But in order to try to get it open, I would have to, you know, touch it. Nope, sorry, not gonna happen, little missy. Unless... Unless? Tell you what, you get Charlene and Purcell to come in here so's I can shake her hand, and I'll let you fiddle with that trunk till the cows come home. <laughs> right, Tanya Timberwolf? <laughs> Yes, Fatima is a girl's name. Thank you, Nadia. Voiced by the same person who voices Mary Yazi and Joanna Brown. Love it. You know what? I've got a better idea. Now, what could be better than me coming face to face with the lady who writes the finest literature this here country's ever seen? Well, that's just it. If you were to just meet her, you'd have nothing to show for it. Afterwards, she'd go her way and you go yours, and that would be it. But if you were to, say, get her autograph, well, then you'd have something to hang on the wall and brag about. Okay. Make it so I can meet her and get her autograph. Oh, but the thing is, she's on a deadline, and if you take her away from her writing, she may fall behind. And if she falls behind, her publisher may pull the plug. And if her publisher pulls the plug, it could ruin her career. Do you really want to risk ruining Charlena Purcell's career? Good heavens, of course not. All right. You just get me Charlene's autograph, and you got a deal. Just make sure she uses my name. I want it real personal like. You bet. And your name is... Fatima, with an F. None of that weirdo PH stuff. Okay, Fatima. I'll be right back. <laughs> None of that weirdo PH stuff. Back to the train. Yes, where's the dynamite? Blow it up. That's a good idea, Demon Slayer. We just need to blow it up. Do we have anything in our inventory that can let us blow it up? Nah. Darn. We have carbide. Does carbide explode? <laughs> More questions? I met a huge fan of yours in town who'd really, really like your autograph. An autographed picture would be even better. Imagine that. Me having fans way out here in the boonies. Well, I'm sure I have a picture around here somewhere. But what I don't have is a pen. Usually I just ask my assistant for one. I have a pencil here somewhere. A pencil won't do, dear. It has to be ink. See if you can borrow a pen from somebody. <clears throat> All right. And I just love how the outside is different now. Like, we can see the grass outside. And the train is quiet now. They just do such a nice job making the different sceneries feel so alive. I just love it. So impressive. What's up? I really, really need a pen. Could I borrow one from you? Sorry. I won't keep you any longer. Pleasure talking to you. Ah, carbide doesn't explode. Darn. Well, no explosions then. <laughs> Oops. Tino, I know I've made you real upset lately, but uh, you got a pen? What's going on? Do you by any chance have a pen I could borrow? Why, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know that every detective should carry a pen? Actually, I carry a pencil. Well, as it happens, I got lots of pens. I'll tell you what, if you can play that Leapin' Lizards game I found over there and do better than I did when I played it, which shouldn't be that hard seeing as how smart you are, I'll give you a pen. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Okay, the object of the game is to get rid of as many lizards as you can by jumping them with other lizards until you can't jump anymore. Last time I played, I wound up with just five lizards. If you can wind up with only four, the pen's yours. Right? What kind of writer doesn't carry a pen? Okay. I often just kind of go randomly around <laughs> without too much of a uh, purpose. And it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Hmm... I feel like that was a bad move. Well, maybe not. But maybe. <laughs> uh, Nancy does have a pen in Ghost Dogs, but a pencil in this game. So she carries a writing utensil, but she's not picky about which one.
Ha. I did it! I won! Talk about luck. Here's your pen. First try, Tino. What else can I do for you? You've been a big help. Don't mention it. Take that. Yeah, jerk. You went to a historic train museum that saves, preserves, and refurbishes train cars back to their prime? That sounds so cool. I really wish trains like this still existed. Like, if we could bring back train culture, because we still have, like, so many of the tracks across the country, but if we just, like, updated them to be, um, like, run off of solar power or something like that, like, how cool would that be? Is it too late to get to turning the valve death. I can try. I tried it earlier and it didn't work for some reason. Let's see. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> see, it's like not doing anything. This is what it did earlier too, like nothing actually happened. Do I have to walk away? Oh, I have to walk away. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Second chance. Okay, we'll turn it off. Steam drain. That's why you have to walk away. I'm gonna save while we're here. Um, a train stream. Perfect. Okay, so we got a pen. Gotta give that to Charlena. Have you found a pen so I can autograph that picture? I got it from Tino. You can keep it. If you could have it say, To Fatima, that'd be great. There you go. Anything else? I'll let you get back to your writing. That would be nice. You're very welcome, Jessica. Yeah, hashtag bring back train culture. Exactly. It just seems so cool. It's like a hotel on a train and you have the dining cars and they're so pretty. The problem with bringing trains back is that most tracks these days are owned by freight companies and they get priority so it doesn't work very well. Oh yeah, I suppose you're right, Demon Slayer. Because then it's more for shipping things. Good point. Good point. Yeah, there's probably no going back from airplanes. There you are. We've been looking for you. Yeah, you won't believe the lucky break we caught. Lucky break? Hey, that was the result of good old-fashioned detective work. It was the result of your insisting we stop for a cheeseburger. Guys, what's going on? Well, it turns out that a grandchild of Jake's engineer still lives around here. What's more, he hangs out at the local diner. Comes in every day. Apparently, he's pretty ancient. Ah, and you found that out when you stopped there so Joe could get a hamburger cheeseburger the thing is the <laughs> owner of the diner wouldn't agree to point the guy out unless one of us fills in for a short order cook he's got to go home and wait for the cable guy or something and since joe here barely knows how to boil water guess who got the job way to go frank oh and get this balducci convinced Lori that jake's mine is somewhere right here in copper gorge so he Lori, and john gray are hiking up the mountain out there even as we speak like that bumble brain's gonna find anything Sounds like now might be a good time to do some serious poking around on the train. Good thought. Hey, I better get going. Wish me luck. I'll go with you. You can make me a cheeseburger. <laughs> you can make me a cheeseburger. <laughs> Got that autograph? Got something better. An autographed picture. Hot dang! She spelled my name right and everything. Go ahead, little missy. Have a go with that trunk. Whatever's inside it's all yours. No kidding, Demon Slayer. Like, that animation was actually really good. Cheeseburgers. Nancy is just as tall as the Hardys. It's kind of funny. Okay, so we have this thing now, but we still don't know the code. So we'll have to figure that out. In the meantime, let's go make Joe a cheeseburger. There we go. Okay. The secret power of Joe's stomach. He uses it for intuition. Lori hike? Yeah, right. Oh yeah, we have to snoop first and then we can go to the restaurant. So snoop, snoop, snoop. Charlena has nothing for us to snoop on because she's always there. 
I wish we could, like, hack her laptop. Hot dang! I love Fatima. Fatima's great. She's pretty spectacular. Okay. What are you hiding in here, Mr. John Gray? Nothing that we can look at here, but we can play the if music. If I had some music, I could play a tune. The Camp Town Races music. Cheeseburger is what Nancy can make in Warnings at Waverly Academy. Can she? She can make a, um, a bagel with cheese. A spyglass. I'll bet it's the one I need for Jake's projector. Spyglass. Yeah. The only way Lori would hike is if Tony gave her a bigger piggyback the whole way. It's so true. Then she would totally do it, because then it would be a great opportunity for her to flirt with Tino. Um, you're going to go, Jessica. Thanks so much for joining. Have a great rest of your day. Too bad it's an all-girl school, otherwise Joe would be there in an instant. Truth. Now I want a cheeseburger, right? Me too. The fiancé went out to get some uh, lunch, and it smells... I wonder if something to do with the eagle in that painting in the dining car. So amazing. So he's just, like, taunting it. Taunting me with it. <laughs> hmm... Okay, so the spyglass goes... not here? Where does the spyglass go? Okay, this is where the lamp goes, and the spyglass goes here. This goes here. But we need the rest of this stuff. Okay... Yeah, sheet music is super handy in the Nancy Drew games. Yes? I hear Tino took you and John on a trek to Jake's mine. Jake's mine, my eye. We went tramping through the snow, lugging all this equipment John insisted on bringing, and where do we end up? At this teeny tiny, half rotten, tumbled down outhouse. He led you to an outhouse? Well, he said it was the opening to a mine shaft, but then John said if it was, shouldn't the hole be going into the mountain instead of just down? So they stood there arguing until Tino finally grabbed a shovel, went inside, and started digging. What he found was definitely not gold. Mel Corbelis from Waverly is my favorite character, one. Did he apologize? Of course not. If he didn't have such nice eyes, the man would be a total zero. Guess I better get to work. I'll be waiting. I hate to break it to you, Lori, but a lot of men have nice eyes. Um, so I would I would focus less on the eyes and more on the personality if I were you. If you play the dossier series, you can play the small tune of the Nile Princess on the piano here. Oh, that's cool. If I had the sheet music, <laughs> I totally could. I'm not g a good um, by ear player. I need sheet music in order to do it. I wish I could play by ear. Yeah, Mel's fantastic. What's up? I hear Tino took you and Lori for a little hike today. Don't remind me. Turns out Tino had no idea where he was going. Good thing for him, my fingers were frozen stiff. Otherwise, I would have strangled him. I won't keep you any longer. Take care. Tino is really in the crapper. The girl ship with Henry Boulay? <laughs> exactly. Am I... Is he not coming back because I'm missing something? No, I think he isn't. Okay, he's back. What's going on? So, how did your expedition to Jake's mine turn out? Well, as you may or may not have heard, I didn't find the mine. But at least now I know where it isn't, which is just as good as knowing where it is. Sort of. It's been great talking to you. Not a problem. 
right, Ray Marie, which is actually what I love the most about Waverly Academy because that's often how people are in high school, particularly girls. It's like a lot of pretending to try and get people to like you. Like that's it's such a teenage girl thing for sure. I definitely remember that being a thing when I was in high school. So I love the, the fakeness of everyone. It's so true. The Bole Mansion. I've totally thought about doing that one in The Sims too. Welcome to the Menry ship. More questions? You didn't go on Tino's expedition to Jake's mine? Please. The man barely knows where his head is. If he's the one who finds that mine, I'll eat my laptop. <laughs> I should get going. All right, then. I'll eat my laptop. Charlena has the appropriate amount of faith in Tino's abilities. Okay. Back to the museum. Now... Am I missing something? Because we need... I need to match that shape. Yeah, I need to match that shape. First you will find my projector. I've stored his name accordingly. Give the dolls an order. I have four words for you. Will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorve. Pay some respects. Let her goodness rub off on you. Hmm. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly. I feel like boarding schools in North America are not very common. I have, like, barely heard of any. Welcome back. Great talking to you. Ditto, little missy. I mean, we can play the games. But I'm, like, missing a code of some sort. I always just, over and over again, do the longest pull on this pulley thing and hope it works. But this game is so rigged. Like, the Yeti is so much more likely to win. <laughs> Yahoo! Ah! Oh, you started on Henry's Mansion, but you're not liking the outside of it. It's so funny looking at um, Nancy builds in The Sims 4 because the outsides look so bad. <laughs> They're just so simple. Like, they look fine in the games, but in The Sims 4, they just look so flat. Yeah, Mel is in Sea of Darkness. She's on the poster as one of the cellists, which is pretty cool. There is a boarding school near where I live, but it's one of those fancy all-boys private schools that cost way too much money. Yeah, I feel like the ones that do exist are, like, extra exclusive. Don't you get the code in the crypt? Yeah, you're probably right about that incomplete name. Okay. Which horse should I pick, guys? First common will be the one I go with. Because I always choose the wrong one, so I'm going to trust you guys instead. <laughs> <clears throat> Which horse? Yeah, I usually suck at that one too, Demon Slayer. I'm actually very... Um, Excited that I got it on the first try. <laughs> green? Okay. We're going green. Go, green horse, go. Go, green horse, go. Oh my gosh, it's winning. Go, go. No, the red one. <laughs> Rude. The green one was winning the whole time. Okay, which one next? Green didn't win. Do I go with red? Because red almost won. Thirteen? Okay, we'll do uh, thirteen next, my history girl. Unless that's what I already did. Oh! Oh! oh. Yes! Thirteen won! The red one won! Nice. Usually that takes me a lot longer. Now we can get Taffy. 
Looks like to get some taffy on a stick, I'm going to need two different tokens. One token and two tokens. Nice. Oh wait, I take that back. I'm hardly ever right. <laughs> Red, you should have listened to my history, girl. I'm always so bad at this horse thing. Yeah, right? That was lucky. We got it pretty quickly. Ooh, yes. Do it, Afro Gamer dude. Ghost Dogs is so good. Can we find the crypt yet? Is that a thing we can do? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes? <gasps> you startled me. Do you work here? I do. Are you looking for someone? Uh, yes. Camille Hurley? She died back in the 1800s. Ah, Camille. Beautiful crypt, wonderful view, good drainage. Whoever buried her must have loved her very much. May I go inside it? You may, but unfortunately you can't. Why not? I accidentally dropped the key down the grate that's in front of the crypt. If you can retrieve it, you can keep it. I'm having another one made. But if you do go into the crypt, just remember... You won't be alone. You won't be alone. Right, my history girl? Oh, you got any hot tips for us? I'll never get that key at this rate. But with our taffy, we can. Gotcha. Ha ha. Exactly. The help of the fellow detectives during these streams is extremely appreciated. Final slug, which is good because we need that for the eagle. And now we need paper. In the letter he wrote to his niece, Jake said she should go to Camille's grave and let Camille's goodness rub off on her. Rub as in rubbing, maybe? Maybe making a rubbing would help. Can I just use my pencil? I need something that'll help me make sense out of all those lines. I need paper. Oh yeah, the taffy paper. The taffy paper. Okay, hmm, copper. This indentation looks familiar. So if we put that in and then do the copper. See you. Then that will help. <laughs> okay, copper is green. Red. Blue, orange, yellow, and purple. Isn't it? Copper is green, red, purple, yellow. Orange. Blue. Oh, I must have put it in wrong the first time. Yeah, isn't the crypt so cool? Ooh, gemstone. Beautiful. And we need paper from the taffy place. High school chemistry coming in handy. Exactly. Good things to know. The crypt keeper is a different story. Exactly. <laughs> Which Nancy Drew game is your scariest game, everyone? I think Ghost of Thornton Hall overall is the scariest. I think Shadow at the Water's Edge has the scariest moment. But Ghost of Thornton Hall more consistently scares me. Welcome back. Great talking to you. I'll bet it was. I'll bet it was. So Something lead is the key. Or lead is the key. Red. Green. Blue. Orange. Yellow. And purple. Well, here's Jake's lamp. Got the lamp. Another slug. Could come in handy. And another but slug. where's his pickaxe? That is a good question. You still here? 
Have you by any chance ever come across a pickaxe that had the initials J.H. carved into it? Why? Because it used to belong to Jake Hurley, and I really, really need it. I thought it would be in that old trunk, but it wasn't. You got that trunk open? <laughs> Wait till I tell Cousin Alvin. He thinks he's so smart. As for that pickaxe, so happens I got it upstairs in my kitchen. Use it to open the coconuts Aunt Lucy sends me every year from Hawaii. Do you think I could have it? Why, no, you can't have it. How would I open them coconuts? <laughs> I can think of many other ways. <laughs> yeah, Juan, go ahead. First Nancy Drew game I played with a safe lock thing. I was stuck because I approached it like real life, turning it right then left. Took me a while to figure out I had to hit the button. Right? It. I did the same thing when I first had a game with one of the locks. I did the exact same thing. But your great-great-uncle, do you really think Buell would approve of you using something that belonged to some poor miner to open coconuts? Oh, okay. I'll let you have the pickaxe. After you do something for me. Sure. I got a bunch of taffy over there what needs sorting. Just follow the directions that are posted by the machine. Them belts get moving pretty fast, so you gotta keep your wits about you. While you're doing that, I'll fetch that pickaxe. You got a deal. I enjoy the sorting puzzle. This one is fun. Wax paper for the taffy. Would you mind if I took a piece of wax paper? Yes, I could let you have a piece. Thornton Hall scares me so much I put off playing it for a while. Water's Edge is scary, but you can escape to the Explore game store. But Thornton Hall is scary no matter where you are. This is true. And there's just so many scare moments in it that it's hard to anticipate when they're going to happen. Okay, banana, mango, strawberry, apple is green, not red, blueberry, grape, and then there's a couple rejects, the dot or the black and yellow. You got a blueberry. And a reject. And a banana. Mm. Oops, that must have been mango. <laughs> grape, strawberry, that's a reject. Blueberry. Grape. That's a banana. Mango. Mango. Do you guys like taffy? I've never been a big fan. Maybe it's because I just generally prefer chocolatey kinds of candies and sweet things rather than fruity ones. But I don't know. Never been a huge fan of taffy. Great. I like the look of taffy. Strawberry. Amanda says yummy. Reject. Banana. Apple. Yes, indeedy. Yep, yes, indeedy, Nancy. <laughs> exactly. How May Perry seems to have a vision of the future warns you not to choose the wrong one, like she's right about the one that will like you. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, she's supposed to be hypersensitive or something because of her burns. I, it was kind of a... Kind of an interesting idea. If, it, if they had alluded to it before, I would have liked it better. For sure. Love the scarier mysteries. I'd have to go with Ghost of Thornton Hall. Yeah. The scary ones just have so much excitement. Characters like Rentoro and Yumi that balance it out. Mm-hmm. Thornton Hall is just extra scary. This is true. Only like certain taffies. Find them a bit too sweet. I love sour candy. My dentist hates me for it. Got that taffy sorted? No problem. That was easy. You sneak any freebies while you were at it? It was pretty tempting, but nope, I sure didn't. <laughs> well, ain't you the goody two-shoes? Truth is, wouldn't have minded too much if you had. Long as you fessed up to it. Here's the pickaxe. Cracked the handle pretty bad on the last batch of coconuts. You sure you want it? Positive. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. Thank you. So we got the pickaxe, we got the lamp, and now we have paper. Hello? Hey, it's Frank. I'm in the kitchen of the diner playing short order cook. Has that grandchild of Jake's engineer showed up yet? Just came in with this lady who's even older than he is. And get this. He's a retired miner, so every time I finish an order and ring the pickup bell, he thinks it's the mine shaft elevator bell. And for some reason, it makes him start telling his lady friend about his grandfather. You mean you ring the bell and he starts talking about James Thurston? Exactly. 
Of course, five seconds later, he's rambling on about something totally unrelated, but I just fill an order, ring the bell, and ding, he picks up right where he left off. That is, unless I fill the order wrong and the waitress chews me out. She's got a voice like a chainsaw, very distracting. Sounds like you better keep your ears open and your nose to the grindstone. I am. Just wanted to keep you posted. Well, good luck. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Okay, I will let you guys... I won't talk so you can listen to the old guy talking about his burger. Volcano burger. Onions. Now I'm going to be so hungry. Jalapenos and hot mustard. Uh, Jalapenos. Hot mustard. I love this puzzle so much. Bacon and cheese. Bacon and cheese. Hey, this isn't what my customer ordered. Come on, you back there in the kitchen, pay attention. Make me another one fast and do it right this time. Ooh-wee, that Sally's got some voice on her, doesn't she? But what did I do wrong? <laughs> I don't get it. Onions, jalapenos, hot mustard, bacon, and cheese. I don't understand what I did wrong. Onions, right? What did I do wrong, guys? I don't like getting yelled at. Jalapenos. These are the jalapenos, aren't they? Jalapeno peppers. Hot mustard. That's regular mustard. This is the fiery mustard. Bacon and cheese. Bacon. And cheese. Right? Am I crazy? Customer complains. Am I crazy? That's totally what it is, isn't it? Help me, fellow detectives. I don't want to get yelled at again. Because those are pickles. Those are avocado, pineapple. Yes, she does have a voice. Jalapenos. We did the hot mustard. I'm so confused. Get me a new burger, I will get another burger. You can't be exactly like, oh, however she was burned down a shack accidentally, therefore she must be the culprit. Right? Ah, the good old days of going out to eat. I miss it. No kidding. Okay, it was right that time. Did you know what you want to order yet, Edna? <laughs> I'm still looking. Did I tell you that my granddaddy was the engineer on a private train owned by one of the richest men that ever passed through Copper Gorge? Jake Hurley was his name. Yes, sir, my granddaddy was Jake's private engineer for more than 25 years. Told my daddy that men don't come any crazier than Jake Hurley, or any nicer. Treated my granddaddy real well and told him stuff. Real important stuff. Stuff he made my granddaddy swear to never ever forget. Stuff that my granddaddy told my daddy, and that my daddy told me. Why don't you get the egg salad, Edna? Eggs are back to being good for you, you know. Seems like just last oh, year... Oh, thanks, Jesse. The bacon didn't get placed last your time. Your clog up if you so much as looked at an egg. But nowadays, well, all of a sudden, eggs are chock full of vitamins and proteins, and eating them's not only okay, it's what they recommend. They should either make up their minds or keep their mouths shut. Make eating more pleasant, that's for sure. Yes, sir, Jake Hurley told my granddaddy things he never told another living soul. Not even his wife. I tell you about her, Edna. I don't think so. Camille was her name. Camille Boulet. That's French, you know. Of course, she died so young that poor Jake didn't have time to tell her anything. According to my granddaddy, one summer day she had a dizzy spell and fell and hit her head. She didn't take well to the heat, see? And sometimes in the summer, when they were going through the desert, why, that train would be just like an oven. Anyway, Granddad said she got right up afterwards and seemed okay. But a couple hours later, Jake found her in her room, dead as a doornail. Now there's another expression that kind of makes you wonder. Dead as a doornail. How can something be dead if it was never alive to begin with? And why a doornail? Why not something else that begins with a D? Like dish rag or dust mop. Dead as a dust mop. That's kind of got a ring to it, don't you think? The way my granddaddy died, that was kind of strange, too. I ever tell you how my granddaddy died? No, I don't think you did. 
My daddy, he came home from school one day to find a railroad official telling his mom that granddad been found dead in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada. He was in the engine of Jake Hurley's train, just kind of slumped over with his hand still on the throttle. The strange thing is, nobody else was on board the train, yet the door to the engine was locked and barred. It was like granddad was trying to keep someone out, like he was running from something. Like something finally scared him so bad, his heart just stopped. Of course, he was in his 60s at the time, and back then, that was old. <laughs> Doesn't seem so old now, does it, Edna? Here I am, pushing 93, and still spry as a spring chicken. Spring chicken! Now, where do you suppose that expression came from? Why not spring goose or summer chicken? Ah, life's just one puzzlement after another, isn't it, Edna? I ever tell you about the mine my granddaddy said Jake heard he'd found? He found a mine? A couple years before he died, granddad told my daddy that Jake found a vein in the mountains somewhere and was mining it all by himself so no one would steal it out from under him. He wouldn't even tell granddad where the mine was. What he'd do is have granddad drive the train real slow so he could jump off without granddad seeing him. Then Granddad would pick him up at a prearranged spot a few days later. Oh, they didn't call him Crazy Jay Curly for nothing. Speaking of crazy, you see how much Abner's charging for a haircut at that shop of his now? Twenty bucks! But what's even crazier is people are actually paying him that. I told him the only way I'd pay him twenty bucks would be if I came in with hair down to my knees. He just laughed and said I was a crazy one. Twenty bucks for a haircut? What is this world coming to? But the craziest thing Jake Hurley ever did was tell Granddad the secret to finding his mind. He made him swear to tell it to my daddy and nobody else. Eventually, my daddy, he told me, and it was so bizarre that I remember it to this day, though I sure don't understand how it had helped anybody find his mind. But since my daddy didn't tell me not to tell anybody, this is what crazy Jake Hurley told Granddad, word for word. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Frank, are you sure that's what he said? I'm positive. Are you sure that's all he said? Look, this guy was old, okay? I mean, we're talking Jurassic. And guys that old don't joke around. They don't have time to. What you just heard is what I heard, word for word. Got anything else? I almost forgot. You gotta check this out. It's just an old letter, Frank. You bet it's an old letter. From Samuel Clemens. Oh my gosh, where'd you get this? I found it in the caboose. Apparently he and Jake were pen pals. Wish I had a famous writer for a pen pal. When Joe gave it to me, I about flipped. I know I should turn it over to Lori, and I will, but it's just so darn Cool. I still don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like it's from Mark Twain or anything. What? <laughs> see you in a bit. Sounds good. I actually love avocados on burgers. That's one of my favorite things on burgers. And I have had pineapple on burgers before, and it's actually really good. Like, there's a couple... Like, if you make a, almost a savory jam... So jelly, even on burgers I've had, have been super good. Like, it, it can work. And there is a restaurant that um, we really like to go to around here called... Uh, well, it doesn't really matter what it's called, but it has a peanut butter burger. And, yeah. it's I haven't tried it, but my mom has tried it, and she loves it. She actually gets it pretty frequently. <laughs> Yeah, the long speech with the gemstones really gets repeated a lot of times, so there's no possible way you can miss it. Which I suppose is a good thing. Oh, Joe. <laughs> it's not like it's Mark Twain or anything. I agree, the food prep ones are always so fun. 
and they are legitimately making me so hungry for like a burger i think when this stream is done i might have to go to dairy queen <laughs> and get myself like a burger and some ice cream because <laughs> i'm just like so hungry for that now it looked so good wisdom charity purity eternity Okay, so we have the numbers. We have, I think, everything that we need now. We got our pickaxe. Yeah, man, Nancy's impressive. She knows exactly where to go. Okay, let's do this thing. Whoops. We'll do some assembly first, and then we'll um, get the pieces that we still need. No, a cheeseburger. I should get a cheeseburger. I actually really like their mushroom and Swiss. <gasps> oh, no. What I need is some duct tape. Okay, so we'll need still to get some broken. duct tape. Here we have the lamp. The lamp. Okay, looks like that goes there. And we'll put some carbide yeah, in it. It should work now. So that'll work now. And then I think we have all six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. All right. The eye of a tiger is fixed on a star. And isn't this the tiger's eye one? Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Floats in a hand from the deep. Citrus is what the foul mouth shall keep. Soft arm. Okay, so yep, so this is Zircon. Fingers that scar. Zircon is the yellow one or the orange one? There's a burger place close to mine. It has so many different options. Like enchiladas, fried fish. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. So lucky to have a Dairy Queen near you. It, yeah, I feel very lucky. Yes, I actually worked at a Dairy Queen for four and a half years when I was in high school. And the Cotton Candy Blizzard topping is so freaking amazing. Like, I would put it on Sundays just to have, like, a little snack when I was working there. So good. You're eating a Swiss, too? Oh, my gosh. Love it. Yeah, this is, this is the game that I consider the cutoff for, like, the classic era of Nancy Drew games. This is the last one. I agree with you. Danger by Design is the definitely, like, what I call the Renaissance period. Where they're trying new things. I can't remember which one is Zircon. I'm going to skip that. Can someone remind me which one is Zircon? Is it the yellow one or the orange one? Um... Hand from the deep, foul mouth shall keep, soft arm is ensnared. Okay, amethyst, I think. This is the amethyst one. Citrine. So again, yellow or orange, which one is the citrine and which one is the zircon? Um, tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. I think this is the tourmaline. And peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Okay. I like Jamila. I think she's fun. What's a HUD? Forever Insane. The HUD? I don't know computer terms. <laughs> okay, while we're here, we can um, unlock the eagle. So basically what we need to do is get to two. Beautiful, first try. <laughs> okay, so now the eagle is unlocked. We can go look at that. Citrine is the round yellow one, okay. Thank you, my history girl. Or Citron? Citron or Zircon? <laughs> Heads up display. 
At HUD is the bit at the bottom with your inventory. Oh, like the interface? E yes? Yes, I think the interface does change after this. If I remember correctly. More pipes. Why am I not surprised? They're really not that bad, Nancy. Like, they're relatively easy. Could be worse. Could be worse. There we go. Um, green. There we go. Okay. Maybe not. Oh, here we go. There we are. Says it's easy. Proceeds there, to have that difficulty looks with right. it. <laughs> Citrine is yellow. Y'all are making me so hungry, right? I am so hungry right now. I had breakfast when I woke up and I haven't had lunch yet. I am like so ready for lunch. And then if we go to this grate, we know the password for it now based on the rubbing and then the sampler numbers. And I think I have it written down in my notebook. I think it's this. There we go. And naturally, we have still more pipes. More pipes. So that's all that has to go. There we are. Always helps to do the red and the blue ones first because the green ones we can move around however we like. Nancy and her annoyance for pipes. Interface changes in White Wolf, actually, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you might be right about that, Mari. Ye yes, actually, I I'm almost positive you're right about that, Mari. It's just, like, it's more the feel of the game, because in Danger by Design, they started to go to um, international locations. Like, that's when they really started to try new things it. more. And it just, it didn't always feel like a like the focus was always on the mystery at that point like the focus started to be on other things it started to move more towards puzzles it started to move more towards um exploring locations and like different places around the globe right incomplete name now i want dairy queen go grab some food we won't mind <laughs> we're getting close though we're so close <laughs> My family by marriage owns a camp up on a lake in Maine where all the cabins are named after precious gemstones. Their cabin is tourmaline and it's the prettiest cabin. That sounds so cool. Fiance brought food, didn't he? He should be playing with you. Couples who sleuth together stay together. I tried to get him to play a Nancy Drew game and he hated it. And he only played it for like five minutes. <laughs> and he has never sounds tried like to do it again. The engine is moving through those pipes now. Isn't that sad? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he can hear me. If he can, he's probably ignoring me. <laughs> HUD and interface are essentially the same thing. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they definitely change more in White Wolf of Bicycle Creek is when the interface totally swaps. DQ for an ice cream float. Ugh, yum. Kapo Cave is the awkward child. It's so true. That you could definitely tell that they were transitioning. What's up? Would you by any chance have any duct tape? Got some right there in my gearbox. That's the good news. The bad news is, I can't open the box. It's an antique lockbox that I found in this abandoned monastery I scoped out on my show last year. You can open it with either the key, which I just discovered I forgot to bring with me, or the combination, which you're supposed to be able to figure out just by looking at the box. Fortunately, I didn't put anything critical in there. I've never tried to open it without the key, but if you want that duct tape, go ahead and give it a shot. Thanks, I think I will. If you get it open, the duct tape's all yours. I bet the animal should start from the left shore. Sarah, I had him play Curse of Blackmore Manor, because um, I thought, he, he told me he was more interested in having puzzles, like he wanted it there to be a point to the game rather than just the story. But, like, a good story would add to it. So I was like, okay, puzzle heavy, really good story. Let's try Curse of Blackmore Manor. Yep, nope. <laughs> Didn't go over well. Maybe I need to try one of the newer games. Like, maybe that's the thing. Danger by Design was good, but Death Ending could have been much better. Agreed. And Kapu Cave was awful. Exactly. 
Totally agree. Should be sure and save during Danger by Design. What happens if you don't, Friday Lambda? Okay, so all the animals start from the left shore. Here we go. And then you bring over... You have to leave two of them on the shore, so you bring over the cougar, it looks like. And then you leave the cougar, and then you go back and you pick up the wolf, it looks like. And then you drop off the wolf and you pick up the cougar. Then you drop off the cougar and pick up the peacock. Then you drop off the peacock, and then you go back to get the cougar, and then they're all on the shore. Beautiful. I love those logic puzzles like that. Oh, recent streamers have it crashed during the park puzzles. Okay, that's good to know find Ransom worse than Kapu just because it had least characters. Yes, I do think Ransom of the Seven Ships is worse than Creature of Kapu Cave as well. Yeah, Blackmar might not have been the best choice. He is my Ned. Hmm, so your fiancé is saying he basically doesn't like fun. That's what I told him. <laughs> That's what I said. Hi, Casey England. Welcome to the train. Joining the live stream party. Just love watching your Nancy Drew videos. That's so amazing. Thank you so much for joining. Danger by Design doesn't mention how one of the characters was with a Nazi, right? They kind of just glossed over that. Shadow at the Water's Edge. It's got a great environment and so many puzzles. Maybe. Maybe Shadow at the Water's Edge was a good, would be a good one. Plus, there's like the scare factor, so it's more exciting. He wouldn't get scared, though. Meanwhile, I'm like hiding under blankets. Danger by Design's culprit could have been stronger. I agree. There could have been more around it. And it's newer. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to see if I can get him to try again. Maybe do Shadow at the Water's Edge. They'll start the park puzzles, it just crashes and freezes. Ooh, scary. Your mom's been playing Nancy Drew for 15 years. Dad never had interest to watch even once, right? There, good as new. Oh, sort of. Okay, so that part is working now, hopefully, because we have the steam. Darn, I must be missing something. I thought about um, doing that, actually, Demon Slayer, with the... Because um, now with the debug menu, we have the... There's, like, train tracks that you can find. We decided Citrine was yellow, right? Shadow at the Water's Edge is so scary, right? Zircon lies in fingers that scar. So this is Zircon. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Okay. So. This one. Goes here. And. This one goes here. Right. Whoa, looks like I did something right. Beautiful, okay. Oh, you mo your mom and you played together? That's so nice. I, I got to play with my brother when we were younger. That was a good time. It's always really fun playing it with other people. 10% of players are male though, they said at the convention. That's great. I, <clears throat> I think more guys need to play the Nancy Drew games. They're so good. And we have liftoff. That's so awesome, Mari, that you guys can play the games together. Right, Sarah? <laughs> That was the jewel puzzle that gets you stuck. I love the colors in this. 
no way he won't get scared. I have a feeling he won't, though. Like, I'm terrified when I play the games, but he's, he, like, rolls my eye, rolls his eyes at me when I tell him that, and he's like, oh, yeah, right, like, a computer game couldn't be that scary. No, it can be, I promise. Yeah, the boss Sudoku. It really is a boss level. That's where Jake's mine is. Brimstone Canyon. Don't you look all excited. What's up? I think I know where Jake's mine is. Tell the engineer to head for a place in Nevada called Brimstone Canyon. Way to go! I knew you could do it, Francie! Not Francie, Nancy. <laughs> Here's the deal. When we get there, I'm going to make sure that you get to be the first one to check out the mine. I'll call everyone together in the dining car, and while we're in there, you slip off the train. Will ten minutes be enough of a head start? That'd be great. Think of it as your reward. Of course, anything you find in the mine is, well, mine. So if I find out that you've taken something without telling me, let's just say things could get ugly. Don't worry, you can trust me. I have the feeling that thanks to you, we are about to discover something huge. Great job, Amy. Ah, uh, thank you. That's not my name. <laughs> All aboard. Right, the technology's insane. He's really not into computer games at all, Juan Pena. Like, he doesn't play any video games pretty much at all. He'll play Smash Bros. with his friends. But that's about it. Deirdre right behind him all the time. It's so true. Sounds like the train's leaving. Where's it going? Come back. Well, Frank and Joe will make sure it comes back for me. Come I back. Hope. Francie. Lori got it right. Francie Drew, exactly. The animation is my favorite in this one. Tied with the culprit being whacked by the air tank in Deception Island. I love that ending so much. Right, Casey England? Ghost Dogs is so scary. I played it when I was 11, and it was so terrifying. So we've got a cannon. Oh no, that's gotta be the entrance to Jake's mine, but it's totally blocked by boulders. Mid, not scary, just scarring. So true. There's a lot of these in this game. Or at least two. Hee 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 hee. This is the explosion we've been waiting for. <laughs> Kaboom. Whoa. Nancy doesn't even move. Like, dodge the rocks, Nancy. There's big, huge rocks flying at you. Dodge them. Alrighty. Oh, right. This is the entrance to Jake's mine. Whoop whoop. You were like nine playing Ghost Dogs. It was the first one your Whoa, mom and I played. What's going on here? Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward purple. Wow, glowing lizards. Cool, but weird. <laughs> so if we follow the lizards, that'll help us figure out how to get to the... to the right part of the mine. Wonder but we what that's doing there. also are supposed to keep an eye out for these around the place, which I think I have written down. Like, I've got a bunch written down. Another symbol. Yeah. Fish. Fish goes with that one. These caves are so pretty. Ooh, Haunted Carousel just came out. Since Lori's get Nancy's name wrong, she calls her Natalie at the start, which is my name. That's awesome. That's so cool. Ooh, Resident Evil or Silent Hill. Oh, I don't think I could play actual horror games. These games are scary enough for me. You'd play Nancy Drew in the basement and your mom would sneak downstairs to scare you? Oh no! My mom accidentally snuck up behind me when I was playing um, Haunting of Castle Malloy. She totally didn't mean to. She was just trying to tell me something. And she happened to come up behind me right when the banshee is in the window screaming at you. So she scared the crap out of me. So I like whacked her. 
because I was so scared and she was so mad at me. <laughs> I just remember that vividly. She was like, Caitlin, <laughs> these games are making you violent. And I'm like, no, you just terrified me. You snuck up behind me during like the scariest haunting moment in this game. It's not my fault. Oh, you guys are brave playing these horror games. Uh-oh. There's some kind of chamber on the other side of those poles. But if I move the wrong one, the ceiling will collapse. Jake was too meticulous not to have left a clue somewhere as to how you're supposed to move them. Right. So I think the first one is cactus. I've seen that symbol before. Okay, so far so good. And then the second one is the fire. Third is the snake, which was just, which one was the snake again? Snake is this one. Four X in circle, which is this one. And then five is the bat. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nope, nope, five is fish, not bat. Oh, <laughs> we're smushed. These games are you making you violent stuff, my mom would say, right? It was such a mom thing. I was like, mom, of all of the Nancy Drew games I could play, this one is not going to make me violent. <laughs> of any games in the world, you should be glad that I play the Nancy Drew games. Right, Demon Slayer? I can't sleep for weeks. Can't do any, like, no horror movies, can't do it. I am the same way. Can't play actual horror. Oh, the fiance's here. Care to defend your lack of interest in playing the Nancy Drew games to the chat? <laughs> I mean, it's just point and click. I can't do point and click. Yeah, but it's, like, the best still. His excuse is that it's point and click. It's not very immersive for me. Oh, you gotta use your imagination. Uh-oh. Oops. Rocks. <laughs> the rocks are the best. I keep clicking the wrong one. Oh, it's this one. There we go. Okay. And I should bat. be able to get through there now. Beautiful. Stick puzzle by process of elimination. It took a while. Yeah, that's how I used to do it. Thankfully, I have it written down in my notebook now what I'm supposed to do, but it took a while figuring it out the first time. Ooh. Okay, that is a skeleton. Jake Hurley, I presume? Camille. It figures he'd be carrying a picture of her. Hmm, there's something underneath it. Right, Sarah? It's not immersive. <laughs> it's like the most immersive series ever, forever insane, lol. I am giving him a disappointed look through the screen. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you for this support. Everyone else is saying what I've been trying to tell him for years. He's one of those, my immersion. <laughs> I play a lot of games beyond the Nancy Drew games, but I still love them. Yeah. Do you show him his spirit animal, Henrik? I haven't yet. I need to show him Henrik. A picture of Henrik. I told him about Henrik, but I didn't show him Henrik. We are all giving him disapproving looks. Ha ha. <laughs> Even golf games and tennis games are violent for real? Are you serious? They're just sports. Wait for the virtual reality mid. Oh my goodness. Death by rock slide. We're all staring at him through the screen. Good. Good. Your boyfriend won't play with you either, Casey? I totally understand the pain. Yes. Right? Ugh. Totally get it. Looks like a letter. April 14th, 1865. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Thank you, everyone, for the sass. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> well, he lost a lot of weight. Oh, because he's a skeleton. All the sass through the screen. Love it. My dear friend Jake, believe me, Jake, my boy, I can think of nothing more pleasant than touring the West aboard your private train. But much as I would like to accept your invitation, the duties and responsibilities of my office forbid it. I cannot leave Washington until this terrible war is over and the states are united once more. Your humble friend, Abe. I would scarcely leave my office at all these days were it not for Mary. Tonight, at her insistence, I will be accompanying her to the Ford Theater to see a comedy called Our American Cousin. Have you seen it? Mary assures me that I'll enjoy it, despite the fact that for some strange reason, I've never felt at ease when at the theater. 
Perhaps tonight will be different. Write to me soon. Your missives never fail to boost my spirits. Your humble friend, Abe. Mr. Wizard Kitten is officially inferior to Frank Hardy. <laughs> Although I suppose all real life men are. Truth. <laughs> uh, Nancy Drew games are number one in the world. What is up with these people? Truth. Facts. Oh all my of it. Gosh. This is from Abraham Lincoln. And April 14th is the day he was assassinated. This letter must be worth a fortune. That's just what I thought, too. See, what I didn't tell you when I gave you that letter Jake wrote to Ruth is that I also found his diary, which is how I found out he'd gotten to be friends with President Lincoln and that he'd gotten a letter from Abe that he knew would be so valuable someday that he always kept it on his person. Can I have it? Sure. See, I knew if we could just find Jake's body, we'd find the letter. And you did it, Amy. You did it. I'm going to be famous. Good famous for once. So you never really cared about finding Jake's mine? Nah. I mean, it would have been nice if it was filled with gold and silver and stuff. But this is what I was really after. And you followed me because you didn't trust me? I trusted you to find it. I just didn't trust you to give it to me. And now that you have... You know, I'd really, really be famous if I could say I found this all by myself. But even if I got you to lie for me, how do I know you'd keep lying? Oh my gosh! What if there was like this cave-in and we were trapped, but I was the only one who made it out? Uh, excuse me? Oh my gosh! That way I could not only say that I found the letter, but that I tried to save you. Only you did something stupid, and it was all I could do to save myself. Oh my gosh! I'd make the national news for sure, and people would say I was smart and resourceful and courageous even. Lori, you can't be serious. That's crazy. You don't understand. People are finally going to respect me. I have to do this. Sorry. No, you don't. You don't have to do this. Sorry! The opening's blocked. I'm trapped. It'll take forever to dig through those rocks. There's got to be another way out of here. Well, darn. Oh, thanks, Casey. I'm so glad you enjoy the reading. I really like reading the documents in the games. It makes it feel more real. Does your fiancé know how incredible you are at The Sims? I will, like, show him a build that took me, like, five hours to do and be so proud of it. And he'll be like, yeah, looks nice. Well done. <laughs> or I'll show him my Sims being adorable. Like, being super cute and, like, playing on the beach with their kids or, like, petting their dog or, like, a cute little cat that I made in The Sims. And he's just like, why is that cute? It's, it's, a, it's an image on a computer. <laughs> He respects it, but he doesn't appreciate it the same way that I do. You found all that out, Lori, doesn't seem likely. She's so kind, but others are disrespectful. I wouldn't be shaking an antique letter around like that, right? The noise it makes, too. Birds flew away at Lori's evilness. They should have, like, cawed. I love Lori as a culprit, too. Lori's a nutcase. I will make my revenge. Curious how we pulled a wrong stick in the cave and killed us, but when we stood where she was... Yep, and she's just fine. Exactly. That hardly seems fair, game. Maybe I could get out of here in this. Okay. This is amazing. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, but I love it. Like, the fact that this is how we escape is amazing. Okay, go right. I suppose I have to crash at least once so you guys can see the, sec the second chance. Okay. Here's, here's our crash moment. Here's our second chance. We're gonna crash for you. This is for you, chat. Whee! Oh no, I've stopped. I'll never get out of here now. Couldn't she just crawl up the tracks? I would just crawl up the tracks. <laughs> it's not that bad. We are here for you. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lori's crazy, crazy. Yeah, it's just not his thing. 
I get it. It's not everyone's thing, but it's nice to have this family of fellow detectives on here so I can actually share my love of Nancy Drew and the Sims with people. Wee! This is so fun. Nancy plays Minecraft. <laughs> love it. I hate roller coasters, so I could never do this. I have a love-hate relationship with roller coasters because I love them, but they also make me super nauseous. It's a problem. Wee! Yeehaw! Whoa! The fourth one is supposed to be pretty interesting. Oh no, did I miss it? So there are some different second chances that I just missed. Oh, jeepers. Ah! Out of my way, Lori. Lori, are you all right? Nancy, is everything okay? It is now. As soon as we discovered you and Lori weren't on the train, we jumped off and hightailed it back here. What the heck's going on? I'm sure Lori will be glad to tell you all about it. Darn you, Natalie! It's Nancy. Dear Hannah, some host as Lori Gerard turned out to be. When her father heard that she'd tried to seal me up in that mine, he canceled all her credit cards and said that from now on, Lori will have to support herself. She has yet to stop crying. Tino Balducci told reporters that he knew what Lori was up to all along and said he let Frank, Joe, and me solve the case so we amateurs could enjoy his limelight. Joe was just about to belt him when a big argument broke out between John Gray and Charlena over whether John had really recorded Camille's ghost. She started calling him a crackpot, and then he started calling her a hack. Then, well, let's just say that soon the press was no longer interested in what Tino had to say. As for Jake Hurley, it turns out that his letter from Abe Lincoln is worth a small fortune. Pretty ironic, huh? Jake spent his whole life searching for gold, when all along he possessed something far more valuable. His uncanny knack for making friends. Love, Nancy. <laughs> Scrolling back up to see what chats I missed. Yeah, the music is so great. Frank and Joe not at all surprised when Nancy comes crashing out in a minecart. So true. When riding a roller coaster, open your eyes and lift your arms high and wave. That sounds fun. <laughs> the letter just misses the mud puddle. Isn't that convenient? Oh, thanks, Sarah. I do think the lorry turned out quite good in The Sims. That was one of the better ones. You run into the dynamite and go boom. Yes, the animations are so much better than mid. It's so true. Lori deserved that. She so did. Struggling so much in the and then there were none let's play she really was. <laughs> this is true. They the they were all real struggle busing. Culprits have a habit of getting away with attempted murder in these games. Attempted murder means Lori gets her credit card cancelled. What? How about prison? Who gets the money from Abe Lincoln's letter? Good question. I guess if he has any remaining relatives, like Ruth's relatives or something, if Ruth had children. I would have let Joe beat Tino up. Same. Okay, we got the Phoenix Award for knowing that the best thing to do after a disaster is to get up and try again. Is that because I have so many second chances? I've never gotten this before. This is because the chat loves chaos and all the second chances. This is for you guys. <laughs> Have you ever been to Paris, France? Well, preparez-vous, because that's where my next mystery adventure takes place. I'm going to be the assistant to Minette, a famous fashion designer. I'll be working undercover to find out why she's been acting so peculiar lately, throwing tantrums, firing people. She's even started wearing a mask for no apparent reason. Her studio is in this spooky-looking centuries-old moulin. That's French for windmill. Of course, that doesn't have anything to do with her strange behavior. Or does it? One way to find out. Help me solve my next case. Danger by design. A la prochaine. I agree. This is the first time that we see Frank and Joe, and I still think it's the best time that they've ever been in a game physically. When's your next stream? Rest your voice, Abby. Yes, thank you, Sarah. This Friday-Sunday schedule is actually working out quite well. Um, 
because I work full time. For those that don't know, I work full time during the week. Right now, I'm working from home doing distance learning with my students. Um, but then Friday afternoons and Sunday mornings are, are actually working out quite well. So if this um, little schedule works for you guys, I'd be happy to continue it as well because it seems to be doing a nice thing of balancing out my voice, but getting at least two games in a week. Yay, Danger by Design! The first international mystery. The French mystery with only one French character. <laughs> only one French character in the entire game. It has a huge cast, but only one of them is French. That still, like, bothers me. <laughs> like, Jean-Mi Traconard, and then we have, like, two American characters. One from Australia, one from Germany. Where is the French people? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. That sounds terrifying. These streams are so much fun. Thank you for pausing and carefully reading through all our chats. It feels like we're talking and hanging out. That's my favorite part of it, Sarah, so I'm so glad that you enjoy it. Friday, Sunday sounds great. Friday's good for me. Yay. Can get my errands done on Saturday and not miss anything. Yay, Demon Slayer. Be tuning in on the next stream. Thank you so much, Casey. You have notifications turned on for your channel. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, that's the best way to know when I am going live. If you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. Um, hit the notification bell so you make sure you get those notifications. Oh yeah, second international mystery. You're right. Besides England, after England. You are right, Friday Lambda. Works for you too as you have to go in this week to prepare sack lunches for kids. Thank you so much for that work, Amanda. That's amazing. Probably going to judge your French next game. That's good. Please do judge my French. <laughs> <laughs> I only know Spanish. Works for me Friday afternoon. Can't wait. Yay! jean mis sass makes up for it. True. He carries the French team. All right. Well, thank you so, so much, everyone, for joining. You are all such amazing fellow detectives. I had such a fun time streaming Last Train with you today. You're all incredible, and I can't wait to play Danger by Design with you all soon. So thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye.